Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone, and happy freaking Thursday. It is December 12, 2013. I have no idea what we're doing here tonight, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, those of you who were able to find out, we're over on talk sheet tonight. Uh, I don't know, some kind of power outage or something going on over at the station. And the show will go on, so thank you for your patience. Of course, it is Thursday, so we are joined by St. Toby One Kenobi, and we have an extra special guest, Carrie uh, Godell. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Sorry with all the stress. I didn't get to talk to you before the show. Um, she is a registered nurse who left her profession uh, four years ago due to irreconcilable differences with allopathic medicine. She's now living in the forest off the central Oregon coast, immersed in nature and solitude and growing her food, uh, employing hands-on healing, sound healing, nutritional healing, etc. So uh, we're going to be uh, talking with her and Tobias, who of course is a personal awakening coach and the author of Listening to the Sun and Awakening Souls. His website is soulcounseling.com. He is also the creator of courseofawakening.com. Uh, the topic tonight, oh no, it's more sex. Sorry, Max, and uh, <laughs> some of the other people we may have triggered the last couple weeks. But uh, sexual healing, what is real? Can men and women ever really come together? Why the separation of one into male and female? And what are men's mommy issues and women's daddy issues? Um, let's see, I guess if you uh, have any questions or comments tonight, uh, the way to call is uh, by dialing 724-444-7444. And then you'll enter um, the call ID, which is 131 four four seven pound and when it asks you to enter a pin if you are not already a talk shoe member you can just hit one and pound and uh yeah we're good to go so woohoo welcome everyone <laughs> uh carrie since uh, we haven't heard from you before i will start with you how are you doing tonight i'm doing really well nice to be here i feel really honored to be part of this Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. And Tobias' favorite question, how are you doing today? <laughs> I feel like I have something in my brain stem today. I feel that feeling of a little nausea when something's trying to get at me. Now, I don't usually go for those scenarios, but I'm, very, I'm honest about it when it happens. Yeah. And I can feel it. And usually what that is, it just takes five or ten minutes of me sitting and breathing and meditating, and you push that thing out. We are, um, and I don't want to feed these monsters, but see, this whole thing when you go into about entities and all that, people tend to get overly excited about it. It's sort of like uh, spiritual gossip, you know. We kind of get into national inquiry mode about that. But that stuff is real. And um, so I'm feeling something in my brainstem today, and it's see, not to fight it, but rather it is a just like doing acupuncture. See, if, see if you change it from that. When you are quote being attacked in the old way, you can say it is an acupuncture needle helping you where to be present and where to have your energy and just your presence be right there. So how's that for an honest answer? I love it, and thanks for reminding me to uh, take a, what, 10 or 15 minute break myself, cause I'm feeling the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, you know, okay, before we go further into this, I just want to hear from everyone on the chat, just because this is our first time trying to use this interface, and I want to make sure that everybody can hear us clearly. Uh, so, yeah, if you're on the chat, if you, just, if you can hear Carrie... Tobias and myself um, clearly and just let us know before we continue because we're the ones responsible for the archives tonight. <laughs> okay, we sound okay, all good, sounds great. Okay, we're good to go. All right, 
So um, the topic tonight um, that came up uh, actually on Facebook, I don't know, I forget what I posted, but um, I always attract a lot of drama. I often attract a lot of drama. I and, uh, can, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not so fun. That time was actually fun. Oh, I remember. I posted a video that you and I did uh, just almost a year ago, um, exactly, Tobias, uh, after you bit my hand off. And <laughs> that, that was me? I wasn't it, or your Damon, <laughs> or maybe mine. I don't know. I'm just being It involved some guy you went to a ceremony with that I stayed out of. It might. Uh, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. I'm just teasing you. But anyway, so there I was, retarded, trying to do this video with you, finally. And it was about uh, men and women, will they ever meet? And uh, Tobias, you've been threatening for years, ever since you did your video about uh, women's issues. And, uh, you know, it's always easy to point out what's wrong with us. And you've been threatening the last few years, well, I'll do one on male issues and blah, blah, blah. And Carrie, so gracefully, uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, uh, pointed out that you have yet to have done that video and brought up the possibility of speaking about it in a uh, subsequent show, which uh, here we are doing that one tonight. And I appreciate you, Tobias and Carrie, for bringing up all those good points. So... I'm going to kind of let you guys do uh, a lot of the talking here tonight, but Carrie, um, why don't you share with us uh, some of the points that you brought up that we should discuss, and most importantly, uh, why? Okay. But before I do that, I would just like to um, invoke the help of a couple of different spirits to help us in this space as we kind of explore and try to come up with a new model for the masculine and the feminine. I want to call on the spirit of owls to help us to look into the dark areas that we haven't yet looked into in the collective unconscious. I want to call on snake to help us shed the skin that no longer serves us so that we can grow. And I want to call on the spirit of dolphin to help us to be playful, <laughs> their embodiment of playful sexuality, and they're great teachers to us. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. And also Kuan Yin, uh, the way she stands upon the dragon. The dragon is not vanquished or tortured or tormented. He seems quite happy, but he is tranquil, and she holds the medicine in her hand and what grace she holds. So I would like them to be present with us as we explore what we can find out about this. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It feels good. And I want to say with what you just introed, Christy, I think it's a little bit of a mischaracterization, but don't feel triggered by what I'm just saying because I know you're a little under stress right now. But I want... And teasing a little bit. You right. can't take everything I say seriously. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, you know, part of me is like, I wish I never fucking did that video. Part of me. <laughs> but part of me. You know why? Yeah. Because it's like everyone's reactionary fucking comment is, why don't you do one on women or on men? And part of me is like, when it comes, it comes. Do you want fake fucking pushing it ahead of time? When it comes, it comes. And why... And by the way, why don't you women do one on men since you know more about our stuff than we do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm being honest. Because yeah, part, of, part of me is like, no, faking it is like horrible. It's like someone playing a piece of music they don't really want to play. Believe, yeah. me, I'm look, believe me, I'm looking for it. You know, in that video you and I did at the park, that was kind of pushed too, I think. You know, it, it wasn't really naturally wanting to present itself. The way I wait for topics to come to me is that. I wait for things to bubble up and say, say this now. Because if you force it, it sucks. It feels like shit. And it doesn't work because you don't resonate. It doesn't feel connected. So I would love 
for it to be time. But it's just like this. If anything is, if there's a timeliness to the universe, right? And I would love for it to be timely for us to be able to surface stuff so that they are effective, so that the message is heard. You know what I mean? It's like if Black Sabbath tried to play their stuff in 1964, it would never have worked. You know, if when Tesla tries to bring his stuff too early, it doesn't work. So I would love for it to be time for whatever needs to surface at this point to help us with whatever it is that triggers you women when you watch that video about you men got to talk about it too. Muted? I'm unmuted now. Sorry, that that was all of us. I was trying to (laughs) mute the feedback from... The cell phone, but I'm not really sure how to do that. I'm I'm sorry. Forgive me. So, so that's me being, you being honest with my will. It's like part of me is like, yes, please do it. I'm not feeling it. I can try to fake it, and manufacture it and look for it. But that's like someone sweating every morning. I get up at 9 a.m. and between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. I write my book, whether I feel like it or not. I don't fucking <laughs> do it that way anymore. That's not how I do it. I wait for it to want to present itself. So, you definitely, you know. And so, anyway, I, I, I feel the... I, it makes my heart sad. We, we can be a little bit more honest here tonight. So. <laughs> 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 oh, my uh, it God, makes, Tobias Cust! <laughs> it makes my heart a little sad that it still feels like the fucking battle of the sexes. It just makes me want to go, well, then fucking go fuck each other and fucking hate each other and burn each other and fight each other and be righteous about it. Good luck with that. I'm out of here. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's how part of my human side feels, you know? Wow. Yeah. I think I'm hearing that reptile or that, that thing that's in the reptile brain that you're working with. I hear you, Tobias. Thank you for being honest about that. I, I totally understand. Yeah, you have to be real with it. This is the whole That's point. The if, we don't, if we don't get real with this thing, if you prod and push and poke, it's like someone saying, play that song, Paul McCartney. Play yesterday. Play yesterday. Play yesterday. And he's like, fuck, I've moved on. <laughs> I know. I get, I, probably not as much as you, Tobias, but I get that too. Do a video about this. Do a video about this. Wait a minute. I, I can do a video when I feel inspired, when it comes up. So sorry for teasing you and pushing, poking, and prodding. No. Um, it certainly wasn't my intent to push you. No, no, in no, any no, way. no, no, no. I think the mischaracterization it feels to me is that Tobias, you promised you would do a video on this, and I said, yeah, I should never have fucking done it until I felt both men and women. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know. So it's like. You do it. You feel the need for it, then you do it. Bring your heart. Open up. Carrie, you got the power to open up to the universe. You do it. Please, share with us. Oh, <laughs> Carrie would be amazing. You know? That's so I'm all, here. Yeah, exactly. That's, so I'm just being, I'm being honest. Part of the healing is we have to, if the whole thing about spiritual fucking numbing and sleepwalking... You know, so I'm just being honest with with a feeling that I'm feeling right now in the moment, you know. I love that. Thank you for being honest. And uh, Carrie, if you could um, help us out here before, um, because I'm having a really hard time hearing you, so I'm assuming the listeners can't hear you as much. If there's a way that you could adjust your sound settings, maybe. Okay. Uh, Do you know how to do that on Skype? Um, Let's see. You can go to Tools. Click on Tools, Options, and then Audio Settings, and then check your microphone volume. I don't have a Tools thing here. Let's see. In your Skype? Increase volume. On your Skype? Yeah. Okay, and if it says automatically adjust microphone settings, if that box is checked, uncheck that. And then it just doesn't give me that option, but this is the highest that the microphone goes. Okay. All right. That does sound, I did sound, uh, yeah, that sounds better. Better. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so Carrie, please. Uh, so what came up for you the other day 
when I posted this video and uh, this whole topic came up. Well, it had to do with how you guys were sort of saying that you were going to address the balance at this point, that this was an addressing of the balance point from the video that was done before about women. But what I saw happening was not the same degree of toughness on the masculine side as I had seen on the feminine side. And you could say that I'm a woman and that I'm triggered, but it really is not the case because I'm actually doing a lot of work within myself in my own depth and exploring this with a lot of sincerity. And... Um, I just haven't seen that occur yet. So I was just sort of calling that out, that this has not yet occurred. This balance has not been represented yet, as far as I see it. Okay. So you have a forum here to do that if you want. You brought up a, re a lot of really good points, Carrie. I was cheering you on like, yeah, yeah, so true. I'm, I'm certainly not as eloquent as you, um, but I definitely felt everything that you said and experienced quite a bit of it. <laughs> so, yeah, share with the listeners. What were those? Uh, okay, so, again, getting back to uh, what, um, what brought this show about is, um, you know, as Carrie said, she felt that, um, we were addressing the female issues, uh, but not the male issues as eloquently. And again, this is not a battle of the sexes. This is not a, a man versus woman and, you know, we're better or you're, you know, anything like that. This is about getting the issues out there, being honest about them, going over ways that we can address them and hopefully come together in better understanding for each of the sexes for those of us that may still be stuck in that battle. Yes, this is absolutely not about men versus women at all, though it may sound like it. As we mentioned men and women, what we're talking about here is the left and the right sides of our own selves within. We're talking about an inherent balance that's being called for to bring us into a, a, a dynamic polarity a dynamic tension of the opposite, being held together with each side being honored in its completeness. And that gets reflected outside in our relationships between what appears to be the different genders. And um, I was thinking about the, the, the ancient pyramid of Giza and how that was, as I understand it, the place that human beings went to experience the activation and balancing of these two halves of themselves. In the queen's chamber, it was the feminine side. In the king's chamber, the masculine side. And then, of course, in the pit was where the purging went on, where all that you fear would come up. And then you were brought into a perfection around that, a, a balance within yourself. And now what we have, as I understand it, is that we have a relationship that is meant to do this function for us. So when we get caught in one side or another, one side dominating the other, one side giving in to the other, we continue to act out this imbalance between ourselves and within ourselves. And it's a very delicate thing, and I hold it very dear in my heart, in my own work with the sacred medicine plant ayahuasca. I'm discovering a lot about my feminine side, the ability to receive love, to hear, to listen. And to receive love is to die. It kills the ego to receive love, is what I'm finding out. Mm. Wow. That's a, can you elaborate on that, Carrie? That, that was very powerful. It kills the ego to receive love. Explain that, please. To really, to really allow love, to really let it in, is a major threat to the ego. I, just, I, I discovered this just for myself. And I feel like 
even though we're talking about addressing the masculine side, or that's what I was seeing as needing to be addressed, it's really our feminine side that is hurt on this planet. I feel that we're not even exactly from this planet. The fossil records show that there's a missing link, and they're not going to find it. <laughs> they're not going to find the missing link, from what I can tell. In the fossil record to show the evolution, I believe that we were genetically modified, and I believe that we're not exactly from here. So we, I feel like we have a strong masculine thing going on that's dominating our feminine part, the life, the cyclical nature of things, Earth. Okay, um, Tobias, um, do you want to kind of share some of the issues that um, you feel, or, or if you're ready to, I'm not pushing on you, but uh, <laughs> you did address I, 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 know I, I want to I wanna pick, get clear something up first. Okay. From real, real healing point of view, from my perspective, we need to be allowed to be human. And, and Carrie, your comment in the beginning when you said, oh, I'm feeling some reptilian thing out of you, Tobias, or however you said that, how did you say that? The, the thing that you said that you were struggling with in the reptile brain, that part I felt that I was hearing that voice speaking a bit. I but don't know I what... Don't I need to marginalize it. I would like I, to hold space for it. Yeah, we need to. I'm That's sorry. the whole thing. I'm trying to show a personal human thing here. This is my whole understanding for me, and after I got off my fucking spiritual bullshit paths, whether it's yogiism or shamanism, they're all fucking isms to me. And when, when God came to me in a way and said, look, you know, the only thing that's going to cut through all of the, those isms is you allowing yourself to feel your darkness or, you know, your fear or your rage or your, you know, vulnerability, like you just said, Carrie, about how hard it is to receive, you know, for example, all those places. And so evaluating me when I'm in a human place feels like shit. I'm sorry for that. I'm just being honest with you. And your, comments on, and your comments on Facebook felt a bit that way as well, like, you know, evaluating so instead of evaluating it I just I want us to be kids you know I want us to be able to be this is what I'm feeling I'm feeling and that's what I was doing in the beginning here I was going part of my humanness feels fucking get off the goddamn battle I'm not speaking at you right now Carrie I I'm guess talking. I feel afraid of that I feel afraid of the intensity of what was coming through it felt yeah, okay. It was I can hear like that. a powering over and it felt really um sarcastic and harsh to me. And I'm not coming from that place. I'm actually in my heart, I'm not denying any aspect of myself because my gut is here too and my womb as well. Mm -hmm. And everything else. And I felt like you were directing those comments at someone who's not me. And I'm glad that those that my comments are available for everyone to go and look at if they would like. I'm glad that yeah. It wasn't just spoken was, and off into the ethers. I'm, I'm grateful yeah. that it can go be looked at because I spoke from my heart and from my gut and from my womb to you in that, yeah. in that conversation. I don't just, like, go off. No, no. I, wanna, I was actually trying to find it so I could look at them. Please. But, but at the, at my, in fact, Christy, if you could find them, that would be awesome. But, I will get on that right this second. Yeah. So, but I'm just speaking from... It's, and maybe I'm, you know, I'm overly sensitive about it, and I'm totally okay with being found overly sensitive and not having, and not having, having all my shit together. But my heart really wants us to be able to create free space for each other, you know. And this is actually the topic I think tonight. You it know? is. Yeah. It's real time. It is. And, and so the dark horse tried to derail it by turning off the Soul Journeys radio page. Everything. Oh, man. And it was like, no way. We're doing it anyway. We're yeah. on it. Thank you both and everyone listening, but especially uh, Carrie and Tobias for sticking it out because I really didn't know if I was going to be able to make this happen or not. So thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. I would just That's like to offer, like, from my good. heart, 
for real gratitude for you, Tobias, and the work that you do. And, like, particularly, you know, regarding this topic, but your song about boys crying bullets. Yeah. I feel like that's getting to what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this yeah. is a really complicated issue, and it's really delicate, and it's, like, dangerous and everything else, but... I like I like that. Del- it is totally dangerous and delicate. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say, I really love hearing you say uh, what you said before, (laughs) 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 which was about, I love that honesty, what Carrie and I just were able to do. For me, I love that. And that's what my broken heart is about, that it was broken for eons. I'm sorry if I cut you off, Carrie. That's okay. Um, you know, that's our hearts are broken because we go into it. No one understands us, you know. And anyway, so that's the dangerous and the tender place. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to be able to express being human. I get tired of, it's like, just please hear me, feminine. Hear what was said there. And, you know, and instead of, or if it was the other way, if we started with the men of, of how, how, you know, whatever afraid they are of intimacy or whatever it's called commitment in the regular world or whatever, if we had started with that, I would want the men to hold space for it at least for a few minutes before they instantly go, well, what about you women? You know, it's like, that's what hurt my heart. It's like, instead of just being reactionary, reflexively reactionary to it, and the other point was my point in the beginning was, I wish I could feel the same inspiration. I've looked for it a bunch of times. And what Christy and I tried to do that day, I think, was brave, Christy. Thank you. And whatever we were able to do at the time, I, I felt sort of like, I'm not sure I have anything to offer on that topic at this time. So what we did in that video at that time, I think was pretty good for not having the well be full of anything. There was no water in the well that I could feel at that time. And that's understood. Yeah. But, but, but to say that you've gotten real about the men's side at that point when it hasn't happened, I think might be a disservice. I agree. I wasn't real about the men's side in that video, and I don't know who characterized it that way. Well, that's what Miss Christie said. She said, we're going to get real about the man's side in this. And I didn't. The, the forum for that. Like, well, yeah. okay, Let, let's, let's be clear here. There was a, a video prior to this, Tobias, where you talked about uh, the feminine wounds and, yes. you know, how we... so. I think that's the video that um, most people are referring to when we are collectively egging you on to do the other side. Because that, that was the video where you said you were going to do the um, I don't you know, know the if male I side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. And that's why I say part of me is like, I wish I never fucking said that because it's kind of like setting yourself up, you know? I think you did an awesome video in the in the one that you and I did together. You did an awesome job. It wasn't really, I don't think, the intent was to, I mean, it was to talk about coming, you know, that was the title, Will Men and Women Ever Meet? But I don't, I don't think that that video was specifically supposed to address, you know, here's all the male issues, here's all the female issues. Because I, I, I think you actually did bring up some of the male issues there and, you taught us, you know, husband and housebound and, you know, where their mm. collective fears are coming from. I think that's the one we hit on. And I think mm-hmm. Carrie, is, Carrie is correct. There's a lot more to that story for the male. And I yeah. totally agree with that. And I would love to mine that shaft. <laughs> I'd love <laughs> to dig, the, dig that well. And I'd love to surface that stuff. And my intention with that is that it serve actual healing on the planet for everybody you know and we can't we can't damage truth truth doesn't really care that much about us in a sense and we can't hurt it so we can do whatever we do here tonight my intention is i want it to reach men's hearts i want it to reach men's souls i want it to help birth the the new paradigm beyond this old battle or stance or not being able to be intimate with each other and and 
you know, not smother each other, not entangle each other, and not distance each other, but somewhere is there a way that Jesus and Mary Magdalene fuck and it actually works? I'd like to know about it. Yeah, well, see, that's my intent, and I'm pretty sure that that's Carrie's intent as well, and many oh, of I us, think. that we want to, we really want to know what I, okay, I'll speak for myself. I want to know what we're missing, what I'm missing. I want to understand the divine masculine better so that I can do a better job integrating that into my life and so I can be better at relationships and understanding and nurturing rather than, you know, not understanding and just saying, oh, well, screw him, he's a man. You know, I'm totally done with that paradigm. I want to understand. So, you know, that's, I guess that's why I've kind of been egging you on to, you know, talk about these issues because, I mean, who can say it any better than you when it comes to male issues? I don't know about that. Well, I don't, I don't pretend, that's my no. opinion. Well, I appreciate that. But I know I'm, I am what I am, and without source, and I'm nothing. I mean, in a way, you know, I get that. So anyway, all, maybe all we can do is ask the question tonight. I'm okay with that. See, once we let go into not needing, then it seems to show up. Yeah, okay. Well, let's do, I don't know, what do you guys think about uh, taking a little uh, break for a moment? And uh, if there's any questions, you know, in the text chat, they can write them down and uh, we can, yeah, do exactly that. Just address uh, things as they come up. I think we did. We asked for it right there. Yeah. Okay. What do you, did, don't you think, Carrie, we asked, I said, I want to know how Jesus and Mary Magdalene yeah. fuck or those archetypes. I do too. How they talk, how they interact, how they play, how they have fun. How they have, you know, love. Yes. So let's put, put Jesus and Mary on the fucking witness stand. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take uh, just a little break here, and uh, we don't have ads or anything. We're doing this uh, talk shoe thingy, winging it, um, you know, as, as best we can. But let's do that. We'll take a little break here, and we'll come back and uh, start addressing some of these issues that we all, I think, are experiencing collectively. And we're going to get together <laughs> with the young bloods here. We'll be right back. SoulJourneysRadio.com. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifiland Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifiland. There's nothing else like Modifiland. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the Healing Shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Yo, what's up? Check this out. The voice of the revolution. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right. Uh, so maybe Tobias, he's, he's probably... Okay. Well, um, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't mean to come in early. I just didn't know if you were catching the messages on Skype. So uh, I guess we will wait for Tobias to come back. And in the meantime, I will just uh, copy some of the questions that okay. are showing up. All right, will you? I'll just copy some of the questions uh, that I see coming up on the chat. Um, I did step away, so forgive me for uh, missing them. Feel free to repost your questions. Again, we are talking about uh, sexual healing and what's real. Can men and women ever really come together? I love how you did that, Tobias. T-W-O, together. Why the separation of the one into male, female, uh, and what are men's mommy issues and women's daddy issues? And, uh, you know, maybe we can start off, uh, Tobias. Would you like to share with us... Um, 
the second question there. Why the separation of the one into the male female? I know, uh, you know, I always have this question when people talk about duality and, oh, you're already one, you're already whole and all of this stuff. And, you know, I always question, is duality a law or is it an observation of what is, therefore can be changed? Because I'll tell you what, as whole and complete or whatever <laughs> as I am, I've always felt that there is something missing. So um, I don't know exactly what that is, but maybe if, if you can share with us why, why the separation and are we already whole or do we need the divine masculine and feminine to come together to, to really experience God or the one or, or the, the magic of oneness? Um, you know, I'm feeling to pass it to Carrie in the, cir- in the circle here. I can channel something out of my higher self. I, but I feel pretty complete within myself. When I sit for 10 years by myself, I feel really good. I feel no compulsion much the last 20 years of my life for needing to be with a woman. But you are with a woman. Yeah, but I was <laughs> So that's, yeah. that's easy to say when you already have that, right? No, but I was alone for a number of years, quote, unquote, whatever that is. But to me it feels, sometimes I feel closer to the feminine without being around a human woman because the human woman has issues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Tobias, maybe you can kind of understand uh, or a little bit where I'm coming from. I've been married two months of my entire life. Mm. And he was gay. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you know, when I hear you say, oh, well, I'm alone or I've been alone, like that does not compute with me. I'm alone. <laughs> I've been alone. You, you, you know, you're in a relationship for 17 years. So although you do have your separate time, which obviously is extremely important, um, amongst relationships, you know, that's not what I define as alone. Does that make sense? I hear that. I really do. And and I have to tell you, I had to fight. It's like I tried to get rid of the relationship. You know, this, this is good. I mean, if you guys want to, you want to do this too, Carrie, where we're really honest with our own stuff or our own relationships? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Answer that other question, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. No, so share ourselves. That feels good to me, like around, around the campfire, like, you know, like little kids. Mm-hmm. No, we, we're just talking on the phone with just, mm-hmm. you know, a couple, handful of listeners here on talk show. <laughs> yeah. I hear what you're saying, Christy. I have to put myself in your shoes, I think, because the, I think I came in this lifetime. I am happy to play by myself, you mm-hmm. know. And so it's actually a stretch for me or a reintegration into the world for me to be in a settled relationship with someone like Joy, who is very much whatever you term Earth Mother, you know, cats come to die on the lawn, you know, she, people just feel comfortable with her. And so for me to come off the mountain, you know, off of the Shiva mountain, off of the yogic caves, which was really my life to happen this lifetime, to go be with Babaji, to actually be with the dirtiness, you know what I'm saying, from the spiritual yogic of, on high perspective, with all the complicated tumult, how's that, <laughs> of, of, of the world is actually uh, more of a growth for me. You know? Yeah, and don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm, I love being alone. <laughs> I love my independence, I love not, you know, having to answer to anyone, this and that, but still... I feel that there is a void, there's something missing. Um, I'm clearly not desperate. I, (laughs) you know, have lots of options. If I wanted to partner up with somebody, I mean, I'd be like, okay, stand in line, guys, or raise your hand, or duke it out, and I'll take the winner, or whatever. Um, (laughs) So I'm not talking about partnership just to have somebody to be with because we're so lonely and miserable and desperate or whatever. I'm talking about that true, divine, sacred connection, oneness, freaking magic that I don't even know how to put it in words. I only, I've only felt it. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe that's not happening much right now on this planet, and we are really in a purging phase, and we are gradually moving that direction. I would like to speak also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time by myself in aloneness and with my own essence, my completeness. But what was happening was it was like a separation from my lower areas. Uh, It doesn't mean it wasn't true going right to essence, that I am, that I am, this is true. This is absolutely so. But then there's this human body that I've taken on that has a womb, and it is a feminine body, and there was a desire to sort of polish the jewel of my humanity and to find out what can be found out by bringing the two parts together the physical parts, and actually in coming across your work, Tobias, there's been like a going down into the gut, into the womb. And with my partner that I've been with for four years, we're doing some really deep work with each other, and it's really painful and agonizing. Mm Mm-hmm. And and because... He has a lot of things about, you know, being abused as a kid and um, walling off to his emotions. And his heart has been quite walled off. Uh, And, like, the separation between the lower part, the, the, the genital area, and the heart seems to be what we're both working on together, is trying to bring those together and then to meet each other. And lately it's been just amazingly beautiful because there is like a breaking down of the the walls and the projection. And actually I had a dream a week ago where you you and I were leading a healing circle. We were helping women to heal Mm -hmm. the feminine side. You were sitting behind me. You were doing something to my spine. And in real life here this week, my spine has gone out. (laughs) I had to go see a chiropractor. This has never happened before. Mm. and things shifting in my womb and uh, things really going deep into that, into that, the pain down there in that womb. And then in my partner, it feels like he's doing work with his heart, like somehow my womb and his heart are working with each other. And I've seen him just really break down walls and share in a way that he really has never done before this week. And I found myself expressing like the terror that I've held in my womb more honestly and truly than I ever have. And then he holds space for it. He's able to because I'm because I'm owning it. And there's just a beautiful thing that's underway here. And within that, I am complete and I am whole with what I am and my essence. But my humanness is finding something else out. I totally hear that. So how's that how's that showing up? Like you're he's crying, he's shaking, you're scared, you're fearful, you're feeling purging of like how is that showing up for you? Okay. Well, It has to do with, like, when his heart is walled off, a lot of times I'd be very reactive, and I'd try to break through that wall and try to shake up something to get him to feel, to get him to come into his body, to be present with me. And I've been, like, sort of withdrawing that role, stepping out of that role and not trying to get over that wall, and I just let him be with himself. I I love that with myself and I just mm-hmm. tell him what's happening with myself and, and the terror that I feel and, the, and the, the pain of having and not being able to be met in the heart but yeah. without trying to shake him into himself and like when he found out I was going to be on this show he, like 
was went into sort of a suffering place or something and just sort of like blah and I I just let him be in that place and I just hung up on the phone with him and and he called back a few minutes later just sharing what was what was happening with him in a way he doesn't has not done till now saying he felt like jealous and wants to tap into his passion and his creativity and like really congruent really I could feel his heart and I was instantly filled with compassion and it's like just so real and like you're what you're teaching me is helping me to get real with myself and then he can't help but get real but that's secondary it it's his business if he gets real or not but yeah, yeah. but in order to be with me it's going to be real because that's how i'm rolling so i i love it can i ask you how do, does he ever like when you're sharing yourself like you have some insight or a fear let's say you have a i feel really weird or i feel i can't trust you mm-hmm. or i feel i feel separate from you i have these old paranoias from you know some other planets purging through me uh-huh. <laughs> right yeah. whatever you feel if you ever feel stuff like that and you're he's not available to hear it uh-huh or he just can't hear it or it's not the right time how does that feel for you or does that happen? It, he, it has felt in the past like abandonment and it's horribly alienating. Mm-hmm. And in the past, I have uh, done things to make him, well, to try to get him to get available. <laughs> like, and, like, I just want you to hear me. Please listen to me. Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, pretty darn loud. You can't even imagine. Yeah, really loud. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah, this like is nitty gritty. Trolley style, yeah. Yeah, so okay. Do, did, oh, what? No, Sorry. okay. I, I guess we're hearing an echo a little bit. I just want to feel that because that's the human thing that happens to us, right? It's like, I love you or I'm connected with you. And everybody, if people listen to this, this is we're just you know this is the stuff where the where we need to help each other or you know whatever where we need to learn and like carrie like you're saying you've reached a new place and not being caught up in that, which is like that feels so good to hear you say that you know but so that place of i want you to hear me you don't get me you don't understand what i mean you know you're not even there for me that feeling of I give up, I'm never going to fucking try to talk again, people don't understand me, or abandonment. That's the place where I find there's huge potential um, awakening, growth, healing, me starting to feel more enjoying myself instead of needing them to understand me. Mm -hmm. Or, or, you know, or wanting to help them even through their stuff. And that's a, that's another topic. But those two are two huge things for me. I've noticed when I find with people and in my own walk with all of this, is like, I just want you to listen to me. I just want connection. And then to allow them to not be able to connect with me. That's huge. Well, yeah. You know? So it sounds okay. like, so I wanted to ask you that. So... You've ex- when you experience that place of, I just want you to feel my heart, and then they're like either in- incapable of doing it, or, you know, in the old way, we would label each other insensitive, or you don't care about me, it's like the word, you know, the whatever, but that we know it's not that, but so I just wanted to hear from you how that feels for you, and how you're growing, or finding new ground in that area. Okay. What bothers me is, is not so much that the person is not there for me, but that they're not there. They're not there. Like yeah. Dealing with a dissociated individual who would like to have sex with me, for instance, okay, is horrible. Mm-hmm. When someone's not in their heart and their their penis is is operating independent of that heart, it's terrifying. 
it's because it's, they're not really driving their own ship at that point. So it's like I don't, I just don't mm-hmm. want to link up with people who are not embodied. Mm. That's a huge point right there. That's a huge one. I insist on it, actually. Yeah. Like no one, the temple is closed to that kind of thing. And I want to tell you from a man's point of view, from my point of view, that's how it feels for me. I used to, you know, people in college used to do, what's wrong with Tobias? He doesn't want to fuck it. You know, the women would go, he must be gay. I go, no, I just don't want to tangle with that energy that you have possessing you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and the pressure on males, and this is what destroys the male a lot, is that they're supposed to fuck anything that offers itself to them. Yeah. And if you women could have some compassion, if you want to heal your men, mm-hmm. if you could help break that spell, that would be very helpful. I want my men to heal themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you could hold space for and not encourage that thing of you're a fucking wimp if you don't fuck every pussy that offers itself to you. Yeah. That would be a really good thing to dispel for our current collective, in my opinion. Well, I think we do that by, by abandoning the energy of seduction and entering our hearts and being full spectrum and fully embodied, we, we just naturally embody that. When we do the other side, which is the seductive energy, when we're not embodied, we're mm. doing thing that links with that and makes that happen. And as you say that, I can see for both of us, male and female, when we are not connected right? We don't have our hearts connected to our root and our sex chakra or our conscious pineal gland for that matter or all of it. And and again, we're not expected to be able to do it. We're learning here, right? Mm -hmm. Instantly. But for either one, the unconscious woman is just as wayward as the unconscious penis. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, It's the unconsciousness that perpetuates the the fuck me because I want my daddy and he doesn't love me. Or, you know, I want to fuck you because I, my mother suffocated me and I want to dominate a woman or something, you know? <laughs> Whatever those cross wires are, I'm feeling right now I can feel uh, hold space for... I'm seeing us in the future laughing about it in a sweet way. Okay, we got disconnected there was a a separation you could say upper body lower body you know anyway that separation that disconnected us we literally have sex in sort of possessed states a lot of humans we're possessed by these other entities and energies and I've never felt comfortable with that this life I mean I can I think drunken sex happened. Not, it's never been drunken sex in my life. I, I'm glad I was protected. But. That was all my sex. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say never, but maybe like once. You know? And I want forgiveness for all that. And again, not to make it so serious and sacred either. And Carrie, you might enjoy a little... I'm teasing you here, but you know, once you come all the way, then the circle starts turning. So a little total raucous, I find life force wants to destroy whatever sacred teachings we ever came up with. So as soon as it says, no, I want to fuck you. I want you to pretend to be the plumber and you just fixed my plumbing and now I want you to come and fix my other plumbing. And as long as the heart is engaged... It's all good, baby. Yeah. But if there's no heart, if there's no feeling and no no ability to touch and be touched in a real sense, it doesn't work. But if but once the heart is engaged and the gut, all that is fine. I mean, I am in no way a prude, right. and I am in no way like oh we have to be perfect and sacred with everything. I mean, I can be downright nasty, mm-hmm. but I insist that the heart be available. That's so much. I, I totally hear that. Yeah. And I think and I think I had that wired into me. 
from whatever, just other, that's the way I came in this lifetime. I was like, no, I cannot do it in that state. Or it just, you know, I wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. And I want to be great. I want to feel I'm here. I don't, you know, I don't, give, I don't care about you guys. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to fucking hear myself. Fuck you guys. <laughs> no, so I'm just feeling for me, I'm forgiving all that 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old boy when he felt confused, you know, about my, you know, you know, women that would come on to me and I'd be like, no. And then I would feel what's wrong with me, you know. That's how I feel. Mm. Yeah, it goes both ways. <laughs> and I, can, I can feel that energy shaking in me right now because I'm interested in healing it. Mm. I want to feel that energy move in me mm. because I want that young man to feel. So you can literally do this to ourselves if anybody ever listens to this. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, we time travel, so I'm seeing Tobias. Toby, you can't call me that, Christy. Toby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, you can. Um, so I'm feeling for him. You know, he's like, no, I don't want to go to the keg party. Sorority girls are demons, man. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And I was wise. My heart was wise, and at the time, I was like, what's wrong with me? You know. And as I say it, I can feel it shaking in my bones. Ah, you know? And then after you feel it for a little bit, you're going to maybe feel some sadness, which I can feel right now. Mm-hmm. And then if I do this enough, I'm going to turn into a fucking party monster. <laughs> it's all safe I I would love for us all to get it I'm barely getting it after 30 years I love if we could allow ourselves to feel that's what you talked about with you and your partner Carrie that we can feel those places and not it is so strong when we are vulnerable I think that's key is getting real with ourselves about the programs we've been running. Not that we are our programs, but that we've been running programs. Mm -hmm. Get real with ourselves about it. And then, like you say, confess one to another. Mm. And this makes all the programs basically come to a screeching halt. They just can't run in that kind of light. Smoke. They turn into smoke. They just softly yes. float away. It's wonderful. Yes. And to honor that. Like to somehow respect it and not try to rush through it. Like I'm feeling it right now, you know. Mm-hmm. I love that place more. I, you know, And I realize that so many of us, we are terrified of that place. You know, we're terrified of, as soon as people start crying, they apologize. I want to grab them and go, don't fucking apologize. This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And then, you know, I'm okay with it now. (laughs) It's beautiful. People, I love in sessions, you know, I just work with an Australian woman. In fact, while we were doing that conversation, (laughs) um, she just, as soon as we started, she just started crying, you know, and, and people will start apologizing. And I'm like, I want to get more and more comfortable so that I had a psychologist from Israel come one time. She just walked in the door and just started crying and like breathing. Like she was, you know, having a rebirthing session. Mm-hmm. And then she said, I don't, that was very deep for me, Tobias. And I'm like, awesome. I have no clue what God just did with you or I do, but you know, Anyway, I just feel I want to. I want to see us in circles and gatherings where we are, literally, ah, just spiritually lamas birthing this stuff out of us, you know. And uh, that 
I feel turned on when that happens. I feel my DNA telomeres coming back to life when we do that. So anybody, whoever listens to this, it's safe to do it. It's safer than anything else. It's so safe to feel your feelings. That's why every teacher says it, you know? Jesus, everybody. Become like a little baby and you're protected. I did it once in front of all these businessmen in Nashville, Tennessee. They were all having a meeting up at the Hyatt at the revolving restaurant, private dining room. And I was part of the company and I had won some award for sales. And I told a story shaking inside in my spirit to the whole group that somehow my spirit took over to tell. It had to do with lightning of God fire hitting my father between the eyes after I prayed for it. And anyway, even in that arena, the next few days I could hear scuttlebutt from the company. Other guys would come up to me and go, we heard about that talk you gave to the board. So even in the most sacrosanct business ego or, you know, strong business situations, it is completely safe if you can open up and let it flow when it's when it's your higher self, not forcing it, not forcing it. Allowing. Allowing. That's my point in the beginning of this. I, I want... Back to the feminine side, allowing. Yeah. It's flowering. I just see the flower opening up. I allowed my heart and my belly to flower that night. And I had their attention for 20 minutes and I was shaking and I was crying and they were, you know, loving it. So I'm reminding myself, or spirits reminding me of that time. And I don't want to misuse it, but just I want to work. My intention is I want to work with you, God, when you want that. And when I say God, you guys know it's my own higher self and all that is. That protects me. I'm just feeling it. It's when Jesus says it's the eyelid that protects the eye. When you become vulnerable, you are, have all this protection in the world, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's the end of my story in sharing in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Christy, are you there? I sure am. Just listening. <laughs> put in a few notes and <laughs> by the way Tobias uh, when you said people aren't listening uh, guest 42 reminded us that yes people are listening <laughs> and I just want to say as a woman that uh, I also want to see Pan busted out of the prison Pan? yes Yes. because I think that's a big part of what we have going on with the shame that men hold. And I know I'm not a man this lifetime, but I just, when I think of the hard on and how it has to be hidden, Mm -hmm. how it's like illegal, (laughs) you know, women can be turned on all they want. And we don't see the external evidence necessarily, but men, they have to hide this and tuck it away. And, and I just, I, you know, Pan and his perpetual hard on and his shamelessness around that. Um, it's not like about promiscuity. It's mm. about letting those energies move shamelessly. And I think that's a key to us meeting also. I love that. Even what terrifies me too. There's part of me that's really terrified by that. Wanting him to stay locked up. But I know that mm. he can't really be well until we let him out. Because that's the first. He has to move so gently amongst us. He is not even received by most. He's he's delegated, relegated to myth for still the vast majority of the population. Yeah. Pan is a very real being. He is the male father God in the er its earthly form. He is God's Earth's form of male God is Pan. Yeah, Earth. Yeah. 
I feel like women, we are linked with earth by our menstrual cycle and possibly also through procreation. And we kind of can't deny that we, that, you know, that whatever has taken over our society is making us try to be all masculine, masculine mm-hmm. qualities. We still maintain our, our humbling every month by this hormonal thing and this link with the moon and with our water inside us. Like, we we can't we can never fully dissociate and and I feel like that's what gives us in a way our power we're linked with Earth. And, and thank and you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. I feel this gratefulness from all of us that that can't be take that is not taken away. Mm-hmm. And it's very humbling when when creator turns down all your hormones so you have no progesterone or estrogen and you're just full of so much pain and going so deep and and you are one with earth and we can try to deny it but it doesn't work very well you can see the distortions that come forward and the rage and you know all the lore about women PMSing and all that stuff it just... all that is is when the when the underground river of oneness of connection of connection surfaces it will push on those things that are in the way between that connection that's all that that's what that is yeah. when we are connected there is no pmsing when i am connected i don't get into that crap in the back of my medulla oblongata as soon as i sit down for 5 10 minutes and just am present with it, it goes away. Or rather, I reconnect, and I am not having the pain in my body. And orgasmic births will also come out of it. Yeah. When that connection, reconnection happens, it is actually beautiful. We, you know, So the menstrual cycle will actually be the time of connection, the time of face-to-face with the divine. In the future, the menstrual time will be the time of face-to-face with the divine. You, can't, you will be more merged. It is insisting. Every moon cycle, it knocks on your door and says, Remember me? I won't go away. I will keep reminding you forever that this is the connection. Appreciate it. Women don't like it when I say, well, I shouldn't say that. Some women are surprised. How's that? <laughs> when I say, be grateful for your hot flashes. This is the visitation of Mother Divine coming back to you. You know? It all has, of course, all the cycles are naturally beautiful. They have to be. And the rest is our, just resistance. We resist it. Or we are shunning it. We are hiding ourselves from the nature, whether it's the hard on or the menstrual cycle or open hearts or whatever, rage. We hide ourselves from it. It will continually hound us. It hounds us forever. <laughs> it will, it's, it's on our trail. It will, it will reabsorb us. We can't outrun it. Who's bigger, the moon or, or, you know, some fucking pills that Pfizer made? You know what I mean? It's insane. So might as well surrender to it. And, yeah, starting with drinking our pee and eventually moving on to bigger and better things. (laughs) Christy... (laughs) Um, Why are you <laughs> laughing at me? <laughs> watching you drink your own pee. <laughs> You're watching me? No, when those <laughs> twelve. No, not that I recall. <laughs> In that video, we saw you. Yeah, in the video, you're holding your nose, drinking your own pee. I know. <laughs> well, in Saint Louis. It's much easier now. I just kind of piss and drink, piss, drink. Uh, but yeah, first couple days were hard, as it is for anyone that's actively trying to remove or heal their programming. Would you not agree? Totally. Totally. Oh. It's hard. It's scary. It's, uh, yeah. 
Isn't that amazing that with P, which is a blood filtration, and of course, it, you know, that we've, the programming, that which has been, is the most sacred stuff, come menstrual blood, women's, all our flu, all the fluids that our bodies create, what could be more sacred than that? I agree, and it takes a very uh, courageous uh, person to be able to separate from their ego and, you know, realize that we're not our body and remove, you know, 40-plus years of uh, (laughs) programming to do it. I'll share with you something funny, though. Um, You know, I've been doing this a little over a month now, and even when I have taken my urine bath, um, I find myself sitting in the bath, And as I'm dumping my jars in, I'm first, like, dump it in the water thinking, ew, I don't want that touching me. You know, I actively still have the programming going on in my mind, and I have to tell myself, okay, Christy, just breathe. Pour it on you. It's okay. It's just water. So then I pour it on me, and I'm literally, like, flinching and cringing as if I'm doing something wrong. And, you know, so I have to start breathing and be like, okay. (laughs) It's... So, yeah, it's hard breaking that programming, whether you're talking about relationships, the male-female divide, uh, urine therapy, or, uh, you know, wanting to be your own doctor, whatever it is. It's, yeah. it's tough. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it, and I really don't think it's gross, but I still, have, I, I still have some of that I'm trying to heal with myself that causes me to, you know, sometimes hyperventilate when I'm in the bath realizing that I'm pouring pee in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was, was doing being honest. No, that's I totally get it. It was like mm-hmm. I don't know six seven years ago when it resurfaced for me from other lifetimes from the 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 um, Shivi Kalpa or whatever they call it in Sanskrit. I should know. But the other day I'm at the gym. I'm peeing in my hands because I don't have a container. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I'm not at actually. I'm in the shower. Okay, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in the shower, and I can feel. I hope nobody, you know, putting it in my hair. You know, like at the end of washing my hair, I leave it in afterwards. The, your urine, because it's what's better for your scalp, or you know, it's got to be good, right? Yeah. And so I can feel that. Yeah, and you know, I don't want some of the other guys seeing what I'm doing. You know, sure. Absolutely. So feel compassion for all that programming we have. I I love that feeling. You know? I embarrass myself. (laughs) Even when I'm in the bath by myself and just thinking I'm (laughs) retarded. For 40 years, I've been stepping out of the bath to go pee, and here I am pouring (laughs) pee in it. (laughs) And by the way, I am drinking pee right now. It's not mixed with anything. It's just... uh, Straight out of the chute. Here you go. You can hear it. Wow. Firing. <laughs> All right. I like that word for it. Okay. So getting back to relationships <laughs> and the separation of uh, male, female, and uh, trying to come together. I um, it's been really nice listening to you talk about uh, some of the issues. Um, that you experience or when you feel, uh, Carrie, that you're not being heard or understood. And, you know, I guess for me, like I've given up on the idea of anyone really understanding me, and I'm actually okay with that. But in a relationship scenario, what really gets me is I just want you to listen. That's all. At least attempt. Just listen, you know, Whatever, totally disagree, that's totally fine, but just hear me from my perspective as much as I'm willing to hear you, your real thoughts, you know, what you're really feeling from your perspective. And, you know, I've realized that all of these are just perspectives. They don't, you know, just because I feel a certain way at a certain time doesn't make it universal truth and vice versa. It's just, um, you know, I guess it gives us something to talk about or think about or maybe expand or learn, you know, empathy or just better ways of, you know, dealing. I don't know. For example, um, 
Uh, okay, I guess like my last uh, relationship, um, you know, we had talked about uh, certain things that, you know, just flat out hurt. Like, you know, or, you know, I don't want to bring out exact issues, but things that, you know, Tobias, when you break my knee, that really, really hurts me. Could you pretty please not break my knee again? And then tomorrow, you break my other knee. <laughs> so, and it's not actually the knee that's broken that hurts. It's the fact that I felt that I wasn't heard, and therefore, I equate that with you not being there or you not loving me. Because if you did, why would you want to go out of your way to hurt me and do the same thing you know, that we've already talked about. This is a great topic, in my opinion. This is so common, that feeling of not... That's why I asked Carrie that before, of, because I think it's a huge one for all of us. They're like, I hear so many people, Joy told me once, she goes, my mom, I told my mom I don't want this, and she kept doing it, and that made me feel like my mom doesn't love me. You know? I asked my mom, I don't want eggs, I don't like eggs that way, or whatever it was. And she just didn't listen to me. She didn't stand up for me. She didn't care what my opinion was. She didn't care about me. That's how we interpret it, right? So what do we do with what do we do with that? I Carrie, what do you what do you think about that? What do we do about that? <clears throat> well, I'm reminded of that animal communication video that you posted with that uh there was this black panther mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. suffering quite a lot and had given a lot of grief to its uh, person who was trying to take care of it and no one could get near it and he I'll say he because it was a he uh, he was called Diablo and he was so angry and terrified and once the animal communicator got near him she heard him. She just heard him. And I felt like his transformation was based on feeling heard. Not that anyone had to do anything, but just to be heard. And yes. I don't know how you get anyone to hear you, but I know you. I have the power to hold space for others and hear them. And I know that just this very week, I had an experience of feeling heard. I shared something um, that was very vulnerable, and I was feeling like kind of, I was sharing a terrified feeling that had anger with it, and it was a scary thing probably to hear. And um, my partner held space for me and just heard it. He said he felt the urge to shut down mm -hmm. and to do his old habits of uh, dismissing me as crazy and all this, all these other habits which would protect him from just feeling and hearing, well, hearing mm -hmm. first and feeling. And he found himself putting himself actually in my shoes. <clears throat> and it, it just, I was like chained. <laughs> and it's not his job to do that, but it's just what happened. And I, feeling heard was nectar, <laughs> absolute nectar. So your boyfriend is a cross-dresser? <laughs> Only sometimes, Tobias. I thought you promised not to bring that up on this show. Jeez. Oh, your boyfriend's a cross-dresser. Yeah. <laughs> boyfriend. What's that? I have a boyfriend that's a cross-dresser? <laughs> a cross-dresser boyfriend. <laughs> I'm sure I do. <laughs> a few <laughs> of them. By many multiple realities. Again, we weren't going to bring that up on this show, but if you want to put yourself on Front Street, be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, just when you said he was, he put himself in my shoes, I just saw him walking in your high, beautiful pink heels. As <laughs> before. <laughs> but that's the business he should tell us, not me. <laughs> Terry, I love how you expressed how you felt when you finally felt heard. And, um, you know, obviously that's the goal, but acting, you know, the old paradigm, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Um, what did I do when I felt I wasn't being heard? 
previously, I got louder. Mm-hmm. I acted like a lunatic or maybe, you know, uh, reverted to an a, a eight-year-old behavior or did whatever. Well, if you're not going to hear me, you know, ask politely or, hear, or, you know, read my mind or whatever, then I'm just going to get louder and louder and louder. And, and, you know, clearly that doesn't work, but that is some of the thing I think that we both do, male and female, um, I've obviously been uh, consciously <laughs> trying to, um, you know, move past that old programming. So uh, maybe we can talk about some of the things that, you know, the old paradigm thinking, what we end up doing, and more importantly, how we can actually catch ourselves in the act and move towards healing that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, rather than getting louder, I guess the other extreme is just fade away, walk away, shut the door, I'm not going to deal with this, you know, which is is equally as destructive, I think. Um, (laughs) You know, so the outburst doesn't work. The opposite end of that, walking away doesn't work. There has to be a balance in the middle for both of us. I, I I, I want to talk about that, but I want to say also, for me lately, it's, I notice myself, I tend to go incisive, like I can, we'll kind of prod, push, go, can we talk about this, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. But for me, lately, God's been talking to me about, can you allow them not to be able to hear you right now? Can you allow them to not be able to go there? They can't open that Pandora's box inside themselves. And can you not take that personally? That that's what's yeah. been happening. That's, that's what's been yeah. happening. That is tough, but that's that I've been finding huge freedom in, and then in even sharing my heart. Like I share my heart, and it's like pouring my blood into sand. It goes fucking nowhere. Mm. It's not heard. It's just, it's you know, I, I I bled my heart blood onto a steel door. Nothing came of it, and to allow that and go. Ooh, that's interesting. Or then not, or what is my compulsion that I want them to hear me? Mm-hmm. That, that's what God's been showing me lately. He says, because to, he says basically, Tobias, what you're dealing with, you have to be a little bit equally yoked or, you know, be able to similarly hear or, hold, you know, holding space. Because when someone is holding a frequency, like if you're sharing, here's my fear, here's this, here's... Or, or even love. You can be buzzed with gigan, ginormous love, and that can be inappropriate too, because it's too much. It's too activating for people. Um, Jesus had to tone it. Buddha, they have to tone it down, or they they cauterize people with that energy. So lately, spirit's been teaching me: you can't expect them. What's that expectation? What's the programming that they should be able to hear me? Yeah. They should be there for me or they don't love me. So for me, I'm finding huge freedom in, let me feel it, and then my gut and my heart say, no, you're going to be oversharing right now. And am I good at it yet? I'm better, but I'm not, I'm not the master of that one yet at all. Because my heart still feels, fuck it, it feels so good when you connect. It's like we're addicted mm-hmm. to connecting to each other. Yeah. And, and this is a huge thing with relationship, maybe. I'm feeling it right now. <clears throat> is If we can reach, this is the goal I'm holding for me and, and I'm the enjoyment, the vision, is that I can have relationship and ultimate intimacy and at the same time, in that intimacy, sometimes my partner cannot hear me. They cannot understand me. And that maybe our our fear of trying relationship again, trying to open ourselves, our souls, you know, is because of that feeling not understood, not connected, betrayed, all that stuff. Can I allow myself to be betrayed? Isn't Jesus allowing Judas? He actually tells him, come on, do it, do it, betray me, do it, you know? And, and that's part of the deal. And it has something to do with, I can't expect. God told me years ago, he says, Tobias, I'm betrayed trillions of times every day. 
You all promise eternal fidelity. I will have no other gods before thee. I promise to hold you and love you and never forget you till all eternity. The, the marriage vows you guys do with me, God says, are much bigger than the ones you do with each other. And you know what? There's a shiny object at Walmart. You forget all about me. There's a shiny object called, you know, you won the lottery. You forget all about me all day long. And when he's telling me this, he's not saying it from a wounded place. He's just pointing out that if you can get a little more comfortable with being betrayed, Tobias, then you can move into whole other areas of freedom. Yeah, I feel that. But when is there the point where you decide, okay, let's say you've been in a relationship 17 years, and neither of you have heard, or one of you, or whatever, doesn't feel heard, doesn't feel satisfied, or whatever. Is there a point in time where we decide, well, we're just not on the same wavelength, and this relationship isn't serving me anymore? Why do I want to keep suppressing myself, my needs, my desires, if it's not uh, fulfilling on that level? No, I hear you. And what does relationship mean? Where's the line? You well, know. everything is a relationship. I mean, is it not? Uh, we're all, yeah. uh, Carrie, you and I no, no, have no. a relationship, Tobias, everyone. I mean, isn't that the purpose of being in this uh, dualistic uh, plane that we're in? I mean, yeah. relationship is, is how we learn to see and define and understand ourselves, no? Yeah, I hear that. That's, I don't think I was talking about that, but no, I hear what you're saying. Sure, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm, it's like, where's the definition? Like, people go, I'm ending my friendship with you. <laughs> and, and the other person is like, okay, or whatever. We make up significance. We make up, we're having a relationship. Some people think they have relationships with people that the other person thinks, I know we are not having a relationship. <laughs> this is true, very true. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so what does that mean? You know, where's the, where are the, the shifting uh, points of what a relationship means? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, there's a time when, yeah, I, I mean, when, you know, things, in the old way, we, we're on or off. We're married or we're not, you know. And I think there's a more fluid place coming that, that we're headed towards. And that requires a place of in-the-moment living and where we don't have relationship charter buildup. Is anybody doing that on the planet? <laughs> like probably 90-something percent of all relationships? <laughs> I, th- I think we're heading there. What, you know, once I, you feel... I, that would be wonderful. Jesus and Mary Magdalene got out of it. Notice how they totally changed our minds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they they seem to be good at that stuff. Um, but yeah, wouldn't it be nice to actually see Kuan Yin have relationship? Because those guys know how to do it. But where's the model for us? We we don't even have the model on the radar for really the collective at this point. Mm-hmm. And the people that try, God bless us, you know, let's have a relationship. I'm not gay, but I'm going to, tr- because God's indicating I should try to love that man or, um, okay, I'm going to be really, really honest that I'm attracted to her, you know, even though I have, quote, a relationship over here. And then the shit hits the fan. And what I've seen is most people that try it Uh, get burnt and cauterized and, you know, shut down Um, so far. But that's not stopping my heart from moving, inching towards that place. Um, And I feel it coming to Earth, but realistically it's still where neutron bombs go off because we have so much still hidden in our sex chakra and our belly and our heart and when you try to do it openly, you know, it's hard enough to do it by yourself. And then with another person, that's tough. Once you go three, it 
it really becomes threatening to the ego, very threatening to the ego. Carrie said her boyfriend was feeling a little insecure about her just coming on the show tonight, right? Mm -hmm. So once we go three, all bets are on. (laughs) All your karma is on the line if you're doing it openly, you know. This is why the Italian culture is not picking on Italians, but they'll mm-hmm. accept they'll accept the mistress. We all do it as long as I don't have to know about it or the other. You know, let's not talk about it. Mm-hmm. But we can't do that model anymore. It needs to be surfaced. It needs to come to the light. It's and we're ch- the problem, isn't it? I mean, people yeah. hate being lied to. Yeah, that's because <clears throat> that's what seems to sting people the most when there is yeah. betrayal. Me lie. too. Yeah, exactly. I was just talking to someone yesterday, and he said, in the relationship, the thing that got me was not that she had pictures of other guys in their private parts, and then she said, uh, no, uh, oh, I, he sent that to me, I tried to delete it, but then he, he really came to the fact that she was saving the pictures for her own enjoyment, but what got him was, not that she was doing it so much, but the fact that she had to lie to him about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is it. So it's hard enough with two. There's a safety, I think, when you go three, as long as there are three equals, <clears throat> no dominator. If you go three, it can really, really help um, in several ways. You, if you're strong enough to let God's source be your teacher, you can do it that way. If you're with a partner and you're equals, equally yoked, meaning you both have stand-up spines that will call bullshit on the other if, if you need to, and you don't kowtow, you don't surrender to keeping the relationship, you know what I mean? You, you will stand up for what you feel. I like it when people call me on my bullshit. Yeah. I mean, because again, if relationship is a mirror, I would have to um, suggest that at least with myself, sometimes we are blind to some of our bullshit. And, um, you know, it it helps me to see, oh, man, that was really dumb, wasn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I like it, too. I mean, we like it when we like it. If it's too much, my sense of it is God shares with me and says, look, we trigger you as much as you can handle. If we over-triggered you, you would go into denial. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, yeah, there's a respectful way of, you know, when I'm acting like a lunatic, I love it when some, Christy, calm down, it's just temporary or, you know, or how you do it, Tobias, Christy, is there that? any yeah. of this in you, you know, <laughs> I, that, oh, come on, you do that all the time, but I appreciate it. Because I need that, I wouldn't, you know, because I'm just looking through this little pinhole and, you know, get caught up, I think, in my fears, my ego, my, you know, whatever, suppressed emotions, so it's hard to see ourselves as we really are as often as we think we actually do see ourselves that way, (laughs) right? So, right, yes, totally. Right now, my heart feels hold space for all of us. I'm feeling the planet. I'm feeling Carrie holding you, Christy, uh, me holding space. of We are babies in how to do new relationships. Or, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're just having the courage to even address this, really. For so long, it's been shame, hiding, divorce, automatic, you cheated on me, that's it. You know, it's just been a minefield, so we've had to hide it, secrets. goes on. You can't stop it. The water's going to flow where it flows. Mm -hmm. But so we're just babies and feel the vulnerability that has to happen. We have to get real and honest for it to work. This is the passageway. I am with her. I remember with Marilyn, my my wife, you know, I was married to first, Joy and I aren't married. And... uh, I had, was very attracted to a star sister that we worked together. It was just undeniable. We were just, you know, totally attracted. And um, I told Marilyn, I said, I'm really attracted to her. You know, I'm definitely going to be with her. It feels like. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you ahead of time, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and we all met, you know. And this was, 
M- Marilyn had had an affair in the old style because she was. She, people don't believe it. She said, "Tobias, you talked about all his openness." The women are like deer in the headlights, you know, in the sense of when a man, she, she told me later, she said, Tobias, I, I heard all that and it sounded real good, but, you know, my programming or my belief system was there's no way I could have told you about the affair and survived the ordeal, you know. And so when she <laughs> told me, it was hurt, you know, it was what really hurt my heart was, you, why don't you tell me? And then I wanted all to meet. I wanted to meet the guy and then his wife and but he headed for the hills he didn't really want to bring his wife in on it um you know which was part of you know me being you know you fucking weakling if i'm honest right mm-hmm. here you are you're doing this but you're unwilling you know you, you're here preaching teaching the seminar because you're in a position of authority of course you said you know people are attracted to you You got to be conscious of that and then you, you're talking about how this, that, and the other. Well, then you need to put your money where your mouth is and let your wife know you're doing this too. Let's all four meet. And there was no way, you know, that could happen apparently. But, um, so trying to bring that up or trying to have my best friend and me have sex, all three of us have sex, you know? Yes, awesome, let's try it. And she literally blacked it out. She couldn't remember it happening. Wow. So these are deep, deep denials that we're dealing with, that we have automatic self-protection for. So willy-nilly polyamory will tend to fuck you up. Yeah. But I encourage people to do it, and I will say, look, it's, you are going to be pulling the lid off the powder keg here. This is neutron bombs going off. Your karma is going to come up. So is theirs, which is awesome. But it's not going to be, you know, this walk in the park. I'm enlightened now. It's not how it's going to happen. Okay, let me ask you this, Tobias. How can we be expected to jump into uh, relationships with multiple partners when, one, we can't even handle a true relationship with ourselves, let alone okay. one other person? That's why the first step is get a vibrator. <laughs> 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 By the way, and, 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 please and for the, fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> and for the guys, you need to get a butt plug vibrator. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> and, and I find that that's not the answer at all. I ended up, uh, you know, I shared my experience. I think on the uh, well, definitely on the video I did called "What's My Fucking Problem." For those who haven't seen it, if you want to uh, look it up. Um, and on the show, but uh, I don't know. I, I just don't see that really being the answer for relationships. I actually find it, um, and I'm just getting honest here, I've used it once in, what, two months? And that even that was almost by force. And I started to feel like, God, this is really lame and pathetic. How old and and ugly and worthless uh, must I be that I have to shove this freaking piece of plastic in my cooch so that I can work on loving myself or spiritual enlightenment? And <laughs> you know, I'm not to say I'm not saying that it's wrong or bad or anything like that, but it actually felt like I was digging myself a bigger hole (laughs) here on Whole Journeys Radio, Um, you know, and and really feeling a void. Do you like porn at all? Do you like, do you ever watch porn? Does any of that turn you on, any scenarios? Well, yeah, I mean, at times, but it's not the end-all, be-all. Oh, of course, no, of course not. Like, if I feel horny or whatever... I have no problem doing that, and I have no problem sharing that um, with a partner, if I, you know, if I had a partner, Um, (laughs) but I don't feel like, for me, it's not comfortable to do it just to do it, to meet some, to reach some unattainable goal of enlightenment. No. It's, no, yeah, I hear that. It's... 
if it if you're horny and there's no man around and you want to move your energy, you know that's that's my sense of it. I mean, to me, it's both and more. It's all of it. You know, it's um, and it can all be misused. You know, people can do porn and to avoid their partner. Of course, yeah. I mean, no, I, I all those scenarios I can happen. The sex addict, and uh, you would think that that would sound like really fun and cool and exciting, but no, because he couldn't relate to a real girl or a real person. Mm-hmm. And you know how I do all my little experiments. I thought maybe with a vibrator that I would do an experiment and see if it would help me. Uh, reach my goals or be happier or whatever, help me, you know, tap into uh, that suppressed uh, creativity and emotions and this and that, but I just don't find myself, you know, it would be forced. I would have to force myself to do that every day, and I don't want to. That, that's of my desire. My desire is not just to get off meant to be enjoyed when it wants to happen if it wants to happen like like you in the video right it's when it's (laughs) yeah what did i made a porn vibrator video when was that yeah that one (laughs) (laughs) no you know what i'm saying christy get yourself off now come on just pleasure yourself come on really what if i don't fucking want to what if I, you know, would rather read a book? What if I would rather, you know, try to understand myself more? So, yeah, it made me feel yeah. um, no, cheap and just, you know, again, like a toy, which is, you know, I've been a toy my whole goddamn life. That is programming I'm trying to heal. So playing with a toy to try to make myself feel good made me feel more like a, a toy or a piece of meat. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hear that totally. Carrie, any thoughts? Um, well, in my experience, what I was finding with the getting real process was that um, I, I went really into my third chakra, will center, anger, and I spent like the whole summer, like summer, like a doing a lot of boundary stuff and pissed off and like kind of really enjoying it and savoring it, anger moving and moving. And I thought I just might be angry forever. I wasn't really sure. And, um, but I was just dedicated to being real with whatever was arising. And then what I found is that like after the anger was clearing and the boundaries were being worked with in a more healthy way, I was finding that there was a natural progression like down into the womb and, um, and then there was like I was finding stuck energies there and a desire for that those energies to move. And then like with the medicine work I was doing, Mama Aya like was helping me to go in there more. And I found that the last time I was in ceremony, um, it was all about my womb and and my butt. And and she was just helping to clear so much, There's so much shaking. We're allowed to move and dance in our ceremonies and. Nice. And it was just shaking and shaking and shaking and shimmying. And, oh, my God, I just loved it. Just to feel that I have a womb, that I have a butt, that I have thighs. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I love that. I want to ask you, because that strict shaman thing about sitting down and some have it quiet, it's never resonated with me. We did both. We do both. We sit in huh? absolute pin drop silence. And then uh-huh. there's drumming, and then there is dancing. And this was uh, in Mount Shasta, and uh, the power of that location, just amazing. And actually, I felt my connection with you, Tobias, and I saw this, there was a, a, a poster over the toilet, <laughs> you know, where you do the purging. Thank you. Beautiful place, beautiful <laughs> poster. Beautiful. It said, uh, Mount Shasta, the return of innocence. And I wanted to take a picture of it, how these, like, beings playing and uh, just really felt the energy of that. And then really feeling, like, gratitude for what you brought to me to discover my womb and discover that I have a body. And, um, yeah, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, well, Mama Aya actually gave me a message for you, which, I wasn't. I don't know if I should say it or. Yeah, you can do it privately. It's fine. Okay, it's a sweet little message. Mm-hmm. But I, I just really felt you and 
gratitude and it's awesome. I like the part about it. I was yeah, I thought of you, Tobias, because that was the toilet where everyone was purging. <laughs> That's what I yes. think of every time I go to the bathroom. <laughs> hey, that's actually very beautiful because ayahuasca's work. I mean, she basically just you know, if you're meant to work with her, she'll you know, look, hello again, here, watch, help them go to go diarrhea and help them puke correctly. That's your job for the next, you know, foreseeable future. <laughs> right? I mean, that's sacred work. She's very much, if you you know. Yeah. She told my friend Mark for a ceremony, he said, here's the sacred work. You're going to be helping people throw up and have diarrhea. That's, this is it. This is where it's at. This is where it's at. At least, you know, to start. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and there was a really poignant moment where the woman who, one of the women, people who leads the ceremony was actually doing that, standing with someone as they were purging. You know, normally you can go by yourself unless you're having a really hard time. And yeah. I heard her singing to this woman uh-huh. in the bathroom in the distance. And I felt like this is what a mother is. A mother stands uh-huh. by and sings in her strength uh-huh. as the child goes through what she has to go through. And yeah, ah, that's so sweet. Yeah, not smothering like you say. Not oh, you know. But we've been raised by children, and we're trying to grow up. Yeah, so yeah. We're doing our best. What comes to mind in Mexico when we were and Joy came, and you know, Joy was going to do ayahuasca, and part of me is scared for her because she's never done anything mind altering. Mm-hmm. And but that all went away. You know, it was just released. Like oh, I can't control you know the universe so much anymore. And at one point, uh, Ayahuasca told me, she said, Tobias, are you willing to throw up for joy? Mm. Are you willing to purge, you know, get diarrhea for joy? Mm. And me being who I am, and this sometimes freaks people out, I didn't answer right away. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you love me, you should say yes right away. You don't love me. You know, are you listening to me? <laughs> There was a pause, right? <laughs> and so I paused, and and I was goes. She didn't say anything. I said, "Let me feel that," because I don't want to say an automatic yes. See, automatic yeses aren't so sincere in my book anymore. I want to say a real yes from my womb, mm. from my heart. Yeah. And and of course I'm going to say yes to that, but I'm going to feel it before I say it. Mm. And so. She goes, okay. I go, yeah, of course I'm willing to do that. It's her first ceremony. Sometimes the first times there's a plug or you need to get going. Who knows? I don't even want to, I mean, you can make up stories about it. So I go to the bathroom and then I'm in there sitting in there for a little bit. I'm feeling this nausea and I'm feeling the diarrhea, you know. And then Ayahuasca goes, hold on a minute. And she goes back to the room where, you know, David, Pascal, Mark, and Joy, and where the other people are. And she goes, hold on to me. I'm sitting in the bathroom, you know. She goes, hold on, let me go check. And then she comes back, ayahuasca, and goes, "Uh, sometimes just the willingness to do it is all it takes. (laughs) That was really cool. And and then she teased me. She said, you took so long to make up your mind, it's past now. (laughs) (laughs) But that's just, you know, her making fun of me. <laughs> yeah, it's sacred work, wherever it is. So holding their hair or holding them while they're sitting there, hold, holding space while they're having diarrhea. Yeah, I could just feel how beautiful that is. Mm-hmm. That's mother, that's sweetness, that's love. I just, I could see them, as you said it. I could see the woman... Purging, I could feel her as a child, as a vulnerable, open. Anyway, I could feel her. Mm-hmm. It's cool. So, how does this have to do with relationship? Yeah, <laughs> you both mentioned the opening up, and you know, of course, that is, you know, kind of what the feminine does. I wanted to ask you if you have any knowledge or insight on um, 
Oh, gosh. Let me see if I can find it. But um, divinepollination.com, uh, they suggested that, you know, it's, it's poles, that, yes, the woman receives in the genitals gifts oh. from the heart, whereas the man gives from the genitals and receives from the heart. I think that that's where some of our, if, if, let's provided that's true, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I, for myself, that's where I feel um, sometimes that, and you know, women, we all say it, oh, well, you know, he just doesn't listen, or he just doesn't love me, or he just, you know, just wants to fuck. And yeah. <laughs> so I think that we have to get to a point where we realize that men give to women differently than women give to men. Um, what do you think about the the perceived structure of the poles that uh, they've described? Well, I, I mean, you, you can feel the woman's breasts. It's the heart chakra. You know, the breasts want to give. They give mother's milk. They give, you know, there's a whole thing about that, that men, the milk can come in at any time, by the way. Mm. you know and there's men that have fetishes about it but let's not make that wrong it's mother's milk so receiving the heart love I can feel how a woman giving it through her breast these are it's not just inside my chest it's here here are my nipples there's an agony there's an agony when the when the man will not receive the heart love into his heart yeah that is a painful thing so for the man to to worship to feel the breast, kiss the breast, you know, sucking, kissing, and if there's a there's a real heart, I mean, I could feel it from a woman's point of view how she would give that love to him, and so that is what we still seek. I think it's a model, but it is not the only model. So yes, the woman receives through her genitals, and then it rises up through her and comes out her chest and her mouth, or more her chest. I'm seeing through the breast. She shares yeah. that energy back back to him and you can create a circle that way sure but the other way if the man won't feel and receive it the mm -hmm. it gets blocked Uh, yeah actually can lead to physical problems i agree Mm -hmm. i mean i'm seeing like stigma or or, uh, cysts in the breast you know Mm -hmm. breast breast can't breast cancer will go go away when when the breasts are flowing naturally, the energy through the breasts. Yeah. Breast cancer will not exist. When the river is flowing, there is no debris. So for the man, but that that's not all the you know, that it needs mm-hmm. the circle needs to open wherever it can open. Get it moving. Get the river moving wherever it can. If it needs to start sexually, awesome. If it needs to start by sharing truth with each other. See me as a I'm like I don't want to have sex unless I feel connected. You know? I mean, I can, I can, and you can approach it from that way too. You can go, let me just get turned on and fucking look at scenarios and, you know, just turn myself on. And then let me move the energy from there up through into my heart. And then as you're actually, you know, having sex, making love, fucking, I want to talk into her chest. I want to talk into her heart. And the kissing adds a whole nother level to it. And then can you bring, you know, there's so much. We, we're just starting again for the vast majority of us to learn this stuff, pollinating each other. But you will also hit, hit the space where you will go, you don't know who's who. I've hit that space a few times where you're like, I don't know who has the cock and who has the cunt. That's when you're starting to merge space. And you don't, you know, your chest and your mouth and your head and, you know, all of it. And start it wherever it can start. Can it start in the genitals? Let's start with that. Can it start in the heart? Can it start with truth-telling? Can it start with however to get it started? So uh, pollination, yeah, I agree. I mean... So they're saying that the man is pollinating his cum, you know, giving it to the woman, and her pollination is her heart. Is that what you were saying? 
when I read the article, it sounded like it was a circuit almost, like that it was. Yeah. A yeah. And yeah, I read that was the first thing. I thought it was really awesome, and like how the uh, the, the third chakra is the block part, and each person, I guess, that's where the the top and the bottom are not communicating at times. At the heart. A circuit going, and it's all happening at once, I guess. Exactly. So, look at the spine, right? But what I want to say is, that's an awesome model. That would be awesome. And the other way around. Literally, you know, the, for the woman to, to, to fuck the man is unbelievably good and healthy. Yeah. And so, I'm not talking just about fucking. You know, no. as far as yeah, as far as the diagram is saying, concerned, it's just that men and women do have different ways of showing love to each other. And one of the traps I find myself in is I expect a man to love me exactly the way I love them. So mm-hmm. I have to be conscious and accepting of realizing, oh well, that's not how I show love. That's how they show love. You know, for example, um, you might not want to sit and talk with me all night till nine in the morning and, you know, whisper sweet nothings in my ear or listen to me cry or whatever, but you'll go fix my car mm-hmm. in the snow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Appreciate it. Heck yeah. I appreciate love speak however it manifests. Let me recognize love speak. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, I show love in, in many different ways, like cooking for people. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's fucking sex for me right there. And if somebody rejects my food or my creation, then I equate that to not being loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was saying that I mean, the, cir- the circuit can go in both directions. Yes, I saw that one going up in the woman, down in the man, but you can do it the other way too. Yeah, so Tobias, are there ways that you feel that you showed love to, you know, your partner where you felt leaving, or you left felt, or bleh, <laughs> you hmm. felt unloved because whoever yeah. was not able to to equate that to love based on their perception or immediate wants I, at the time? I hear you. I think I feel more... I feel... I can feel the blocks. And, like, I am hearing that Buddy Holly song. It's like, what is it? Um, My love is bigger than a Cadillac, right? I try to show her, but she keeps driving me back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like I. people can't receive love, like Carrie said in the beginning. One of the heart, sacred, most sacred, most difficult, most opening, most vulnerable things is to receive. Joy is a tough woman, self-directing, mm-hmm. strong. So when I try to show love and I can feel her not able to receive it or notice it, Mm. Yeah, that part part of me is like, mm, I wish I could connect there and not feel sad or hurts or whatever. And then she, I know she feels that way. She mm. goes, I'm doing this for you. I'm loving you and trying to give and share and hold space for you. And you don't even notice, mm-hmm. you know. So we both feel that way at times. Mm-hmm. And then I want to try to bring it up. Now, I tend to be the one who wants to surface and talk about stuff in our relationship. You know, it's like Joy's, we're playing it's so funny. My the person that cuts my hair is this young Italian woman. She's awesome. She's so funny. She's waking up very quickly to all kinds of stuff. And we were joking the other day because she said, I hate talking about stuff. You know, my boyfriend wants to talk about stuff. And I go, no, nope, I want to go for a walk. I don't, hate, I don't want to talk about my feelings. And I go, well, that's how I am in our relationship. <laughs> right? so we, were, we were joking about it. I said, we should all go out to dinner. So us guys could commiserate about how our women don't want to talk about their feelings. <laughs> right? The back ass words of obviously the normal thing, or what most people think. So we're just having fun with that. But yeah, it's 
you know, and again, like I said before, can I allow, it's not that Joy or I am purposely not able to receive it. It's that we're just on automatic programming, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to allow, one thing Ayahuasca and God is teaching me I also did really well with this last one. I was like, I stayed out of it completely, which was awesome. And I'm having to, I'm, I'm learning to back off and not expect people to have their hearts open. You know, I'm having to learn. Imagine if God or Shiva or whoever, or Pan for that matter, imagine if Pan showed up and wanted to have sex with you, <laughs> right? Which he does, but he has to make sure you're a little bit sedated so you can handle it, right? Ah, uh, whatever. And um, <clears throat> but imagine if they insisted. Insisting is kind of like rape, you know. And God's been showing me very clearly to us: you can't insist on them being able to receive. Me mm-hmm. of of look. Here's all this beauty and clarity and freedom and better way of doing things and. And God says, look, what I, I know more than you, Tobias, a lot more, and I back off. I totally respect people's boundaries and their will and their, their not wanting to see or, or know or wake up, as you call it. I completely respect their boundaries perfectly. I recommend you start learning this even more, Tobias. And I'm like, I can't argue with that. So... Does it hurt sometimes that I can't, you know, show my Cadillac that's big, my love that's bigger than a Cadillac? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I know other people feel that way with me, so. Yeah. But love doesn't force its way in. It has to be just offered and Mm -hmm. received or not. And sometimes it cajoles, and sometimes it's a little insistent, and that's okay, but it really doesn't ever trespass, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not continually trespass. It might in the moment. I'm okay with that, you know. I'm not rigid about that spiritual. You should, fuck yeah, get in my face, wake me up in the middle of the night, yell at me, tell me what my fucking problems are, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while we're at it, um... <laughs> until I'm not fine with it, and I'll let you know. <laughs> oh man. Mm. Mm. But you know, we, we we can bulldoze people after you gain a little power and insight. You can bulldoze other spirits, just like my doggies. They trust me, and I can overwhelm them. You know, I can overwhelm Gabby. She's right here next to me on, here on, over, here on the bed. She's so sweet and she trusts me. I can overwhelm her with information, intelligence, energy, you know? And love is a, temp- is, love is a temperance movement. <laughs> love is tempered. Love is appropriate. And I have... I am still, that's part of my karma. That's part of my learning for sure. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Tobias. Um, You know, you mentioned sometimes we can push too hard or whatever. Uh, One uh, issue that I commonly encounter, (laughs) and, and it's not because it's always true. I think we kind of addressed that in the video Um, that we did a year ago where some men equate a woman talking (laughs) to nagging, even if it's, oh, honey, I love you. What do you want to eat for dinner? Um, And and I'm not saying there's not nagging, and I'm not saying that I don't nag. I definitely have had my moments, years of nagging. Um, I'm talking about the, the block or fear or something that comes from a male perspective that when they hear a woman speaking, it just automatically equates to nagging. Where does that fear come from, in your opinion? Past imprinting. Past imprinting. It, it, in my view, it, it needs to build up. It needs to have a 
past imprint that that triggers that past imprint um by the way when you said that that's that's joy and i you know i'm the Was one I nagging no <laughs> 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 So I think it's past imprinting, meaning whether it's this lifetime or just a collective imprinting or, you know, there's a shut, shut the fuck up and leave me alone. It's actually very deep in the father God and the mother God energy because there was original, original misunderstanding, you know, like, um, there was original misunderstanding. The, 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 the light wanted to just explore and create new universes and the womb void was saying we need to make sure it's loving and we need to make sure that all the creatures we create ac- actually can live and be supported and you're off just wanting to fucking create new universes so it's a deep imprint actually in the in the polarity game of male female as well So yeah, it needs to be looked at, needs to be felt, need need to be willing to look deeper and go, why does that trigger me? And a lot lot of it's unconscious. Absolutely. It's a fear, often, that's trying to be resolved. You know, we need to take care of the kids, we need to take care of the kids, we need to take care of the kids, you know. I do it with joy. I do that fear, nagging, imprinting, because I'm like basically saying we need to be heal ourselves uh, or we'll be lost, you know. I've done, I do some of that with her. I'm getting a lot better this year. (laughs) And again, we can't force that on anyone. We can't say, partner, uh, you have a deep imprint that you need to heal, you know. But I think that, you know, when we're talking about mommy issues, daddy issues or whatever, um, in my experience, when I've encountered that, it seems to be, you know, the mommy thing, like, oh, my God, don't tell me what to do. My mom used to tell me what to do or whatever. And it's like, wait, nobody ever told you anything to do. Where is this coming from? Oh, this is original imprinting from, from the, the male and female energies that are our parents that we come out of. Um, so it is an original imprint for this part of the universe, or actually probably for the whole galaxy. And um, so it's... Uh, we are the pieces of God that need to evolve this. You know, we are the pieces of God, and God, Source, Mother, and Father aspects are now evolving. Gods and goddesses, Shiva and Parvati, all the gods and goddesses, the male, female inside us, are evolving this polarity game. We are evolving this polarity game. There were original imprints. There's a set of books called The Right Use of Will that are really good at explaining all that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these original imprints are there and we have more or less of them depending on who we are. Um, you know, some are more polarized to be totally terrified of the feminine, you know, men, and they don't want to hear any of it. They want to hear nothing from the feminine. Um, and there's women who are just giving up on men completely and fuck you. And we're just going to, you know, subterfuge and get you any way we can. Um, and there's all kinds of spectrums in between. So uh, most of the time, that's not, obviously not originating even in that life. Uh oh. Okay, did we lose Tobias? Are you there, Carrie? Yes. Okay, so we're here. All right. Uh, maybe just um, Tobias is having a little thing come up. But while we're waiting for him, Carrie, what do you think about this? Um, yeah, when it might sound like nagging because of that listening thing, you know, like if we don't feel heard, we might have to keep saying it. Yeah. That's what kind of comes to me. I mean, I guess we could equate that to like a daddy issue, right? Daddy never loved me. Daddy never wanted to hear me. So I'm going to make someone else listen to me, right? Hear me roar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you yeah. now. That's weird. I heard you the whole time. Oh, well, we were time. nagging too much. I thought you just slammed <laughs> the door on us. <laughs> I was like, maybe I need to stop talking for a while, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, my idea is it's, it's an imprint of fear of that which I don't understand. And I need to shut it up. That's the that's the imprint in the mail. I yeah. I can't I can't survive if I go into that arena. Tobias, can you share with us honestly other ways that oh. maybe you have been triggered in your life by females or feminine energy or or whatever? Um, ways that we're not seen. I mean, I know Carrie and I can both see that. You know, sometimes yep, yeah, we nag. I'm guilty. Or, you know, he might be pushy, yeah, I'm guilty, or whatever. But what, what are we not seeing? What, what else do we as women collectively do to trigger men or push them? Well, I was just going to say what triggers me. What has triggered me my whole life, but it could have to do with Sagittarian and my particular bent and, and approach this lifetime, is hiddenness, manipulation, connivingness, not forthright. Um, that has triggered me. That you know, I've been I've been a crusader for you know. Tell me what you fucking you know. Tell me what you feel. Be real with me. That's triggered me. So that overly so. So you uh, feel that women um, unconsciously albeit maybe are not completely honest with what their needs or what they really want, their true intentions? Or what they really feel. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, that triggers me when, when anyone, really, it could be men or women, but that triggers me when it's... It, you, now I'm more understanding of it. Like, I understand it's you want to be Scorpio, or, and I'm not an astrologer, but, you know... You want to be hidden. You want to keep it close to your heart and under your vest, and you want to play strategery from behind the scenes. I get it. That's okay. In fact, I'm starting to appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it can be very loving to just hold space and not, you know, force people to be honest. (laughs) Right? Um, I feel that. I feel that, uh, um, you know, the men with me mm-hmm. or women, men with women. I haven't been real with you. Oh, yeah. I definitely yeah. feel that. I mean, it's okay. For example, um, I, I was the, the trophy wife, so to speak, mm-hmm. uh, for all of my life. And, you know, these men would say that they love me. <laughs> but I knew innately that that wasn't true. They loved to own me and possess me, and they loved having arm candy. They loved having a woman to do their cooking and cleaning and, you know, all of that stuff, or somebody to put on a nice dress and make all the heads turn everywhere we went. But they didn't actually love me, so I felt that that was dishonest. You know, as soon as I opened my mouth, you know, I wasn't allowed to have an opinion. I wasn't allowed to even have a conversation about feelings. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that goes both ways. Definitely. I'm just going to leave this for later. You don't have to think about it right now. Why would you think you would be attracted to men like, or end up with men like that? Just think about that later. Deal with oh, it. Oh, well, I, I know why. <laughs> okay. I totally know why. I don't... <laughs> I'm not completely blind, and and maybe I am a little bit blind, but as far as I've been able to figure out, I mean, that's that's what I always was. It was what I always knew. It was what I was programmed to believe that was my role. Mm -hmm. So I I took it on. It -hmm. didn't feel good. I tried really, really hard, and that's why I've never really had any long-lasting relationships. However, when I was unconscious of my destructive programming I you know even though I was able to get away oh well that guy that's you know here I am in that relationship again I would just go to the next one and it would be the exact same thing until I was able to you know look at myself honestly and ask and see how I was bringing that about so I'm not you know I'm definitely not blaming anyone oh man or so mean how would you do that no i i know exactly (laughs) 
where that came from, at least in me. And and that's the whole point of, you know, everything I've done the past seven years is to heal that. Yeah. That's a, that's a big journey. Yeah. And, you know, daddy issues. Hello. <coughs> I had daddy issues in a nutshell. My daddy didn't love me, so I'm going to, you know, and I, I didn't have a role model relationship to look up towards or try to emulate. I was, you know, my mom was in an arranged marriage. My grandma was in an arranged marriage. My mom arranged my first several relationships. Um, literally up until my 30s. So I felt, you know, it was that old paradigm, that pattern, that that's just what we women are supposed to do. Yeah. Let's heal that right now. Yes, yeah, so let's fucking do it. <laughs> just feel the space for all the, the feminine, the aspect of mother, fa- mother fem- or feminine energy that is still caught in just this in prison of it has to go along with it. It doesn't even know why. Let that come out. Let that come out when it when it's timely. God's will, Mother's will, Father's will, Source's will. But my intention for the planet is that that feminine gets free at a pace and a speed that feels safe to or that it wants. Let it all come out. Let that unconscious prisons come out come out from that it's time now it's safe now it's safe to speak up it's safe to move towards freedom Christy I just want to say that I really resonate with that being a beautiful object thing and how we're conditioned from being little girls to be a cute beautiful pleasing seductive object and um, I just really resonate with that and waking up out of it and coming into my beingness and radiating from my center instead of seeing myself as just beautiful and only valued for that. And yeah. I also feel like this is a fundamental dynamic. I mean, Tobias, in that one video, you said that, like, the feminine is the void. Mm-hmm. And... um what I think happens, you were saying that the women fear the void, but I feel like we are the void. And I feel like the masculine fears the void. It fears being swallowed back up into the void. And so as it comes close to us, it wants to make us into an object so that it can have control of us and feel safe around us so that it doesn't lose itself back into the void. And totally. That's just yeah. what comes to me. And I just feel like we, they were, like, the masculine will be subsumed into the void, and it's a beautiful thing, but we have to find that out. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. I think I, what I said was the woman is afraid to be alone. Yes. Not that to be afraid to be the void. She is the void. The fish, yes. doesn't, know, the fish doesn't know it's wet. It's a non-issue. Yeah. So the woman almost feels, why are you afraid of me? I don't understand. Because the woman can't see herself. The man can't see themselves. Mm-hmm. The fish can't see itself. You can't see yourself. You just are what you are. Mm-hmm. And so we scare each other. Mm-hmm. Boo! Boo. <laughs> and that's that image that Spirit showed me of, of imagine raising two kids, human kids, in separate rooms. They have no interaction with anyone. They're just raised without, you know, sort of not knowing what's happening to them. And then one day when they're sexually mature, you introduce them to each other in the, du- in the dark. What kind of attraction, fear, repulsion is going to be happening all at the same time? Yeah. That's, That's kind of... What's that? It sounds pretty fun. Yeah, but, it, but it's also going to be, I don't know who you are. Yeah. For what you are. Yeah. And that's what happened originally as this universe is created. Out of the ultimate void comes these two aspects, yin-yang, whatever, male-female, and they're kind of thrown together in a big bang. 
So there's some issues. There's some getting to know each other, how the other functions. And there's some fears involved with that too. Definitely. I think sometimes I don't know who you are or what you are also Mm -hmm. stems from us putting our own projections out into what we think relationships should be. So while, uh, you know, I'll use myself for an example. Uh, The men that I was the trophy wife to were men that, you know, I wanted to impose my ideal what relationships were. I, you know, they were perfectly happy with owning women. That's where they came from. That was their programming. It was, you know, perfect for them. There's many people that are happy in that. But I projected what I really wanted. So I felt like, oh, well, I don't really know who you are or what you are, when innately I really did. I just ignored that because, you know, I did feel that that was my role. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we're on automatic. You know, we don't even know. I mean, yeah. We we have to do what our parents did. I used to not believe that. You know, I used to think, oh, yeah, whatever, just because our parents are this way and just because they provided this model for us, blah, 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 doesn't mean, you know, we're programmed with that mentality. But boy, oh, boy, was I wrong. (laughs) Like every, well, up until, you know, the last several years, every relationship I ever had was exactly modeled after what I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So conscious, as we wake into, it's unprogramming ourselves and finding our eternal freshness that then we can explore. Then it becomes fun. At first it seems to be a lot of pain or a lot of confusion to unprogram. You're programmed, there's no questions, this is how you live, this is how you die. And then something says, no, we're going to wake up. And so you go through all this deprogramming, basically. Yeah. But it gets fun again. It gets mm-hmm. interesting. It gets interesting. It gets mm-hmm. babiness. It gets, I want to live and enjoy, and the trees look different, you know. Yeah. And it's literally like a whole new world, you know. I mean, when we become conscious of these aspects, of the unconscious aspects of ourselves is when it becomes fun and then we can, you know, breathe and, <laughs> you know, consciously see it. So when it comes up, you know, it's like, oh, ha, 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 there's that old programming again, silly willy. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Carrie and Tobias, we have a caller on the line who would uh, like to talk with us. Are you ready to bring them on? Sure. Yeah. All right. We have a uh, guest 56, <laughs> whoever that is. Come on in. Welcome. Hi, Christy. Hi, Kale. I mean, uh, <laughs> Tobias. <laughs> It's Rutherford. All right. Uh, How are you doing, Rutherford? Hey, Rutherford, behave. Behave. (laughs) This is Rutherford the first. (laughs) What do you have have for us, Louie? No, this is in Louie. This is Rutherford the first. Stick with the continuity. (laughs) All right, Rutherford the first. What do you have for us? You know what? I plum forgot. God bless me. <laughs> <laughs> Our job here is done. <laughs> well, me, me and the missus, Mrs. Rutherford the first, uh, we're, we're having trouble with relations because uh, she, she, she's, uh, she's on the periodicals and she doesn't want to use the mouth. <laughs> she doesn't want to use a what? The mouth. A mouse? A mouse. mouse. Oh, yeah. He's from Brooklyn. He's trying to say mouse. Yes. <laughs> so, oh. what, so what's the problem? Well, should I, should I uh, divorce her? <laughs> uh, what's the problem? What's, what is her objection? What's the problem? What does she say? What's going on? Can you not hold it for a week? What's wrong with you? Well, look, 
I work the farm. She what you can't if she can't eat if she can't go without eating for a week. I can't go without getting some for a week. It's only fair. I, I see you're saying if her mouth is working one way, it should work the other too. Exactly. Well, that makes sense to me. Now talk to the women. Let's see what they say. All right. <laughs> go ahead, girls. All right. Like like eat, look, if you could drink milk, you could drink. Forget it. I get it. I'm with you, bro. Come mm-hmm. on now, Carrie, Christy, Christy, you guys got to speak up. I'm with hey, you. Louie, get fucking real. I love your jokes and all, but your jokes are obviously sometimes masks for what you're really feeling. So uh, please feel free to get real and go all in. Hold on. Let me get Louie. Louie doesn't want to put come on the your, phone. Put all your chips in. Yeah. I like, I like chocolate chips and potato chips. Okay. Christy, it's, it's your show. And we're going to throw you in the wood chipper in a minute. What you got um, I'm trying you to be to... gentle. Uh, <laughs> so you got... called in because we must have triggered something, I'm guessing. Yeah, no, I forgot, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so are you just calling in just to hear yourself talk? Well, I mean, it's okay. I, I've done that before. Okay. We healed Rutherford. Rutherford's good. Yep. All right. <laughs> Louie, you're, so what's up? Do you want to ask us something? and Or, you know, how you doing? What's going I, on? I, I thought I did. Yeah, I know. I agree with you, but the girls don't like to talk about it. So you got to come up with something realer. <laughs> why, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Tobias, as an older gentleman, is it all about balloon knot pleasures? The what now? The balloon knot pleasure. The balloon knot? What is this? I don't. I can't understand you. Okay, when you look at a balloon knot, what does it look like? A balloon knot. <laughs> the balloon knot pleasures. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say so. That's just an aspect, about 20% of it. Oh, okay. An aspect, if you get my drift. Yeah, no, I got. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> okay, good. All right. God bless. All right. Thank you, Rutherford. Appreciate your call. All righty. I like Louie. He makes me feel good. Oh, I love Louie, too. I just, you know, I also know right. Louie off in- the show. And, you know, I believe this is something that he talks about a lot, although... Uh, you know, it might not be exactly like us. So I was kind of hoping he'd get real and talk about the issues that he'll bring up as soon as the show is over. Oh, and right before it started. Oh, and for the next 20 years. <laughs> right. Let's feel love for all ourselves. All ourselves. It's difficult. Like we just talked about, men being imprinted, women being imprinted. We're imprinted with attraction and fear of the other, you know? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a horrible place from one perspective. You know, you can't, you know, right? The jokes, you know, can't live with them, can't kill them, you know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. So I'm just feeling compassion for this. I could see the argument of, God, why did you do give us this power? This is too much for us. I can see how people feel that way at times. We need strict rules. To, you know, we need to live like the Amish to make sure that everything is controlled, you know. I can feel compassion for all. Uh oh. Carrie, are you there? We lost him. Yeah. I'm... Darn it. I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> <laughs> there, he got dropped again. Okay. Are you back? I don't, Mr. I don't and Mrs. Get it. Rutherford can still have a good sure. time with each other, even if she's on a periodical, really. <laughs> you know, he has a mouth and she has a mouth. Sounds like they're good to go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. What yeah. What, per- what periodicals does she read in any way? That's what I'm wondering. She's reading a week-long periodical. Yeah. But she could use the diva cup and then he can use his mouth and she can use hers and they're all good to go. What's the diva tap? It's called a diva cup, C-U-P. Cup, yeah, and yeah. And it's a little silicon... Mm-hmm. Cup that you put inside inside your vagina to catch the blood. 
and God. then that way he won't get any blood on his face. Mr. Rutherford, I hope you're listening because that was for you. Because if her mouth works, his does too, and they should be good. There you go. <laughs> Actually, the really advanced stuff is what the Pleiadians talk about. It's not advanced. It's going back to the original. Once we make the blood holy again, it's really not much of an issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> issue? I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something we want to talk more about, um, Carrie? Yeah. Not necessarily. I was just answering Mr. Rutherford's question. Yes. Giving him an idea. Enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I feel good. I feel complete for today, you guys. Me too. Yeah. Hey. So, thank you. I loved I felt really good. I got to do process my, some of my own stuff. I like that. And um I could feel collective stuff as we were talking. I could see collective things for the planet, which felt really good. Mm-hmm. And we are sowing seeds in the collective. Yeah. You know, we and that, and not that I that's what I'm here I'm here to do that, but I'm primarily here to love and feel and heal myself so I feel good and feel God. That's what I want. And I like being a little more honest with feelings, which I think is really helpful. I would, you know, I'm, I mean, I want to push it, but I'm also aware of the voice in my head that says, or my body that says, go here and then go here. Or, you know, don't go there or don't go too far or whatever. And I want to honor that too. To me, that's love. Instead of thinking we can explode all the truth at once and we can handle it all at once. Let's just all get 13 men and 13 women together and let's all take our clothes off and fucking explore every possible permutation of energy and emotion and bodies and all that. Yes, I have seen that and I want to get there in a way that it's timely and real and we can all bring this healing back to the planet, the real healing, you know, and it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's just not, not immediately, you know. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, Louis called in with his real name. Louis, is that because you want to talk or be, or what? <laughs> well, no, no, because I heard you, uh, I heard uh, Rutherford was on and you needed me to, you, you're calling him me and, you know, we're not the same person. So, but here's oh, my real I'm question. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I can see I can see the problem because Rutherford and me are never in the same place. You know, so there's some rumors going on. Anyways, uh, Tobias, you're gay lovers. That's what it is. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be projecting your stuff on me, young man. All right, let me meet I'll, I'll help you guys get along. All right, anyway, yeah. Go ahead. All right, what you got? Um, what you got? how you how you deal with uh, the scar uh, like scarring from the past? Mm-hmm. Here's a like, let's, question. No, like, let's big, let's say. Mm-hmm. It's a big question. Go ahead. Let's say. Like, uh, let's say, like, uh, you're still holding resentment from junior high school to your first girlfriend falsely accusing you of rape, and, you know, and then, and then you know, that, that leads up to, like, constantly getting uh, totally disrespected by almost every woman you come across. Mm-hmm. And, and how yeah, do you try... Now, to... Dewey's getting real. Thank yeah. you, Jenny. I appreciate that. No, that's very, it's a huge question. It's a yeah. good question. Like, like, to the point where you're so angry that when you see every chick, you just want to stab them in the heart and watch them bleed to death and laugh. <laughs> yes, that's my Louie. <laughs> I hear, Gary, I'll, I'll let you talk some if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel compassion. I just feel a little bit of compassion. Louis, it's basically you got to peel it like one little piece of... Imagine a book. you got to just go through the pages one by one 
and feel the feeling a little bit at a time so it doesn't overwhelm you. You know, go back to junior high, picture the girl you're with just a little bit. Don't go all the way into it so, like, the boiling, you know, red eyes start happening like we all do. You know, we get so fucking overwhelmed with rage or confusion. Like, a little bit at a time, go, okay, let me feel this. And you want to work with it like you're like a piece of ice, like a big ice float. You know, you want to eat a little piece of the iceberg at a time and do that through some techniques, which can be just feeling and breathing as simple as just let me feel it. Let me hold it present. I, and with the intention of God, I want this cleared up. I want this iceberg melted. I want this thing dissolved. I want this to be finished with this. I don't want to carry around this um, not this cyst, this uptight, tied up energy inside me. You have to literally, or like if you're shoveling a, you know, a, a snow or something, it's a piece at a time. So I'm <sighs> seeing the image of ice, and you've got to go into it with your feelings and your heart and go, I want forgiveness, I want healing on this, I want this out of me. And it's a process. Um, now but why do I need... Why do I need forgiveness, though? I mean, I, I, I'm not the one, I'm not the one that, that punched me in the face for just being uh, a lovable, overweight teddy bear. <laughs> right. But you have this feeling in you, right? You feel angry, upset, pissed off about it, correct? Right. This is why. This is why. You know. I don't know if you've ever seen Power Rangers, but you know. Sometimes I just feel like getting in the Megazord and just start slicing bitches. Right. I got you. I'm laughing because I the imagery is good. Uh, no, it's awesome. No. So you need, the feeling is in you, Louie. Right. If mm-hmm. you didn't, if you felt peaceful, if you felt ah, it's not an issue. It's water off the duck's back. I'm good with it. I've healed it. But it's still not healed in you. Correct. It still triggers you. Correct. Right. Because, I mean, right. because look, look, you know, I whenever I go up to talk, to, well, okay, mostly internet dating. And let, let's not lie, like mostly into, which is why I shut down my plenty of fish and my OK Cupid accounts because I got tired of being spoken to like I'm, you know, John J. Rape, the inventor of rape. Right. So this, you can't control them. You want to heal this this memory you're talking about. You want to heal Mm -hmm. this thing that you feel in you. So imagine if you had a piece of ice stuck inside your body. You want to start melting that piece by piece. And there's some techniques to do that, which can be as simple as just feeling them and keeping your breathing open while you do it. Feel it, and then your intention, your heart, your heart light, picture ET, that turn on your heart light, my heart is going to melt this old piece of ice, go back to the original girlfriend where it first started happening, the stuff that happened, the being accused of rape, whatever, the feelings it triggers in you. It's not about them. I don't care, but I want to heal me. I want to get this. And once you get, you know healing, forgiveness, healing has happened when you can picture the scenario, you can see it and go, uh, I don't feel a charge on it anymore. I feel kind of clear of it. And that takes some work. It's like going to the gym. You know, you're not going to lose 30 pounds instantly. It takes you 90 days or 60, you know, six months. So it actually took me two weeks, but I was in a coma. There you go. There's you, know, you and I have a lot in common, um, and maybe that's why I've, you know, loved you and accepted and <laughs> appreciated you since the day we met. Um, I used to go around thinking, you know, all men were out to get me and, you know, because I harbored, I held on to the pain of, you know, abandonment, being abused, raped, et cetera. And it really wasn't, um, I really wasn't able to be conscious of that aspect of myself truly until Tobias pointed it out to me when we started doing shows, I don't know, four and a half years ago or whatever. So when I I forget exactly what you had said, Tobias, maybe it was just through the course of events doing shows together, um, you got me to see how I was creating more of these scenarios in my life. And, you know, my grandmother used to always tell me that which I feared has come upon me. And I can look back and see how every single thing I feared certainly (laughs) 
came upon me in very, you know, destructive ways. You've been around, uh, you've been in my life five and a half years, so you know just, you know, some of the aftermath of what I created or co-created in my reality to bring more of those traumatic situations. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was so that I would have an opportunity to actually deal with Uh-oh. And thinking that, you know, well, this man or this group of men did this to me, so every man must be that way. And I would just like to encourage you to continue to get real with those feelings. Um, but, you know, be open to the possibility that not every woman is out to get you. She's not out to trap you. She's not out to you know, fake a pregnancy or lie about you raping her or any of those other things that happened to you in your life. And uh, just, when I had to get real yeah. with the fact that not every man was a wife-beating alcoholic or, you know, whatever, black ops fed, blah, 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 I looked towards people like Tobias and Joy or other people I knew in my life that were in positive, healthy relationships and held on to that, you know, and maybe not, uh, you know, maybe tried to model it or at least my actions, my thoughts, and my behaviors. So I just figured, well, gosh, if they can do it, you know, if Tobias isn't an alcoholic, you know, wife beater, then certainly there is one other guy out there that also isn't. And so it was a step-by-step -step process uh, for me to get out of that. But when I did, I haven't met an abuser since. It's beautiful. It takes some work. It takes some actual. It's like if you come on an old house and it's full of dirt and fallen you come down. Come on an old house. <laughs> if you, yeah, come upon an old house. Oh, okay, if come you, on. Yeah, no, if you, you know, you need to clean it up. So you've got some cleaning to do, Louie, inside yourself. Yeah, that's all that's that coming. And that feeling, those feelings that still get triggered in you, that's the place to work at it. What triggers me? It's not about them. I don't, wanna, I don't want to react to them. I don't want to revenge on them. I don't want to teach them. I don't want to show them that they're wrong. I want to clear this thing in me. I want to heal this thing in me. And there's some methods of doing that, you know. But it, it is basically... Feeling and healing, feeling and healing. And there's talk therapy, you know, psychoanalysis. There's uh, the alchemy process that I do, um, you know. Um, but basically yeah. it's being present with the feelings and turn on your heart like E.T. and say, I want to move through this. I want to warm this stuff. I want to melt these old feelings. I want to convert them. I want them not to be dragging this old pattern with me around. And it's not going to be easy. Or it's not going to happen instantly. It takes some doing. We have to be willing to do the, do the doing. I'm not going to call it work, but we have to be willing to do the actual, if you want to get somewhere, you've got to walk there, drive there, you've got to get there somewhere. So you've got to do it. You can't, talking, thinking about it doesn't do it. When you look at the house that's all dirty, you can go, hey, look how dirty it is. I know all the problems, the garbage bags, dead rats. That's very different than picking the shit up and getting it out of there. You've got to do it. Yeah. And, and so I don't think you've, you, you're just starting to look at, okay, what do I need to do, which is awesome. And then once you start doing it, you're going to notice results, and then you're going to get excited, which will be really cool. Yeah. yeah lovely. And right. Louie, I just want to point out, um, okay. you've known me during this period where I've made these conscious efforts to change these things in my life, the patterns that would bring those types of relationships <laughs> into my life. Um, so I just want to remind you, you know that it does work. You know that there is hope. You know that we can actually change that within ourselves. And you also know how ugly and dark and scary and hard it can be, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you're different. No, I'm not. Yeah. I was just somebody who was tired of repeating yes, the same destructive patterns over and over. That's it. But you're a but you're a hot, shapely, voluptuous blonde. Louie, 
I have an article I'd love you to read about the beauty myth, and I know that that's something that always, you know, certain people want to fall back on. Oh, well, you know, everything's so easy. You're, you're a beautiful, voluptuous blonde, or you're, you know, this and that. But, I mean, think about it. In fact, I'll, uh, uh, here's the article right here. I'm going to post it in the chat. I came across this last night, which really, really hit home with me. Um, but I'll just read you a little part of it, if you don't mind. Hey, Christy, mm -hmm. I've got to go. I've got to go. And okay. So, love you guys. Louie, you'll be back. Once, once you start this, you're going to be really happy you did it. And I think we've got a lot tonight. And thank you, Carrie, for being part of it. Lovely. And we should do this again when we have, uh, you know, the radio towers back up, too. That's and Christ, Christy, thank you for always holding beautiful space. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. I do what? actually, I'm expected to be on another show uh, mm -hmm. right now co-hosting, but I, Louie, I do love you and I care about you, so I will share, you know, this with you, but yeah, we, we pretty much have to wrap it up for tonight. Sure. Love you guys. Love you too, Tobias. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, so um, Louie, I did post that article. It's a long one. I'd love for you to read it, but... Um, yeah. this she writes. I'm going to share it with you. Breaking apart the beauty myth is what it's called. And this isn't all in order. These are just little snippets that I took out of it. But she says she wanted to share her experience of looksism from the perspective of a woman who, as expressed to me by others, has been considered attractive by our narrow cultural beauty standards for most of my life. You're damned if you're pretty. You're damned if you're not pretty. And if you're somewhere in between, you might be lucky enough to go unnoticed. The projection and deflection of beauty, or lack thereof, often keeps a person's real story from being told. And it reduces their multidimensionality while keeping people striving and engrossed, a.k.a. consuming, in an effort to reach unattainable ideals that represent hollow rewards. Talk about a mind fuck. <clears throat> she continues, I know I've gone unscathed in many situations compared to my less attractive counterparts, but for every beauty win, there has been at least an equal number of undermining losses. Here are just a few examples people may have overlooked as they were busy projecting how good I've got it. Being hit on by entitled men, being harassed on the street, not being taken seriously in the workplace or in interpersonal relationships, being sexually harassed in the workplace, losing female friends to jealousy. I literally have had friends break up with me because they thought I was too pretty. Being treated badly by men and women who project that, I, that they think I'm too good for them or that I'm all that. Older men that think they own me. Older women that think I'm going to steal their husbands. Nice guys intimidated by me, boyfriends who decided that nitpicking my appearance would keep me from getting a big head, and a wide-spanning spectrum of sexual objectification. And I'm going to let you read the rest of the article on your own, but that, you know, that set point that you like to fall back to, saying that I'm different because I'm pretty, has absolutely nothing to do with my desire willingness and dedication to changing myself and my perception. Okay, okay, well then I'll change that because you make good pie. <laughs> I mean, do you see how you saying that, Christy, you're different because you're pretty, you're a big hot blonde? Do you see how that objectifies me and uh, makes me feel insignificant because you're you're equating all of my value, all of my worth, to a physical appearance. What happens 10 years from now when my saddlebags are hanging at my knees and my tits just right above them and I'm a wrinkled prune? Then what am I? Then what am I good for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought that one. sometimes, yeah, have you ever thought that sometimes, yeah, the whole pretty thing or whatever might get you in the door, but how many men are out there that would seek to abuse that? 
you know just in the last five years that we've known each other how many different men have offered me things, whether they're jobs or this and that, but then when I don't give in to their sexual yeah. desires, then I'm the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what? They create all these gangs to come gang stalk me and slander me and put up fake blogs and videos that then follow, follow me everywhere I go in my life. So then I'm actually unable to attain those things as somebody who, in your eyes, is less attractive can do. So I think part of healing yourself, Louie, is healing mm -hmm. your thoughts getting real with your thoughts of how easy women or pretty women have it. Does that make sense? Yeah. What do you think about that, Carrie? I think it sounds right on. <laughs> <laughs> so you relate to some of that as a beautiful woman <laughs> where everything is so easy. Yeah. Because you're pretty and have big tits. before. And yeah. People thinking I have it easy or something, especially with the okay. form, being thin and everything. Not, you know, what people struggle with being fat or whatever. I get a lot of projection like that. And it has nothing to do with how much I struggle and the health oh, of it. I get destroyed all the time. It's like, oh, maybe, maybe this would be, maybe you would have a better time with girls if you weren't so fat. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's gotten to the point that I think it's funny now. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry well, I mean, that you go through that, but, you know, we, we all do on some level. It's not native just to Louie. I mean, what happens when a pretty girl gains 10 pounds? Same thing. I mean, I got it even from my own mother, from my boyfriends, from my... <laughs> fiance from everyone because there's this expectation. So if we could leave the perceived beauty out of the equation, I think that we can get a lot more work done when we focus on the individual as a soul, as a spirit with needs, emotions, desires, and feelings. So that's where you're at, Louie. Your problems in life don't boil down to you being overweight. You're one of the most beautiful people I know when you are being your authentic self. Why would I stick around for five and a half years? Because I'm a good soldier. <laughs> You're obviously pretty freaking cool. I don't have very many people in my circle. Okay. Yeah. I got no I got nothing. I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to like get out of this with a joke and you're just not <laughs> letting me <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well you know what maybe you know, I don't know, Carrie, I would actually like to um <clears throat> do a show about that very topic that Louie brought up in the future. Would you like to be part of that? It could be really enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know when and when you'd like to do that. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens if our station ever uh, gets back up or not. If not, then I'll just change everything and uh, maybe talk she will be our home for a while. <laughs> Thanks for finding us a home for tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight and for bringing your presence and um, your insights. And I think this was really healing for a lot of us. It's been fun. <laughs> All right. Well, Louie, did you have anything else you wanted to share before we close? Um, cougars? I don't know. Okay. I love you. <laughs> Love me too, I guess, sometimes. I, wait, love you. Wait, that's what you say. That's a proper response. 
<laughs> All right, everybody, I just want to thank you for joining us here tonight. I know it was a little uh, chaotic. I'm expecting to be in one place and, um, you know, doing this last minute freak out thing. And uh, hey, we did it though. And I'm super thankful um, to you, Carrie, to Tobias, Louie, for calling in and sharing your authentic feelings with us and everybody else on and the chat that were here to join us tonight. Yes, and Rutherford. So, um, you know what? I, I'm not, hopefully, AFR will be at, back up next week. Um, if so, uh, we'll be there, same time, same place. That's 7 to 9 p.m. Central, Monday through Thursday. After that, I'm going to be taking a break. Um, you know, my road trips are kind of like my Prozac, and I'm sure uh, many of you, uh, I've probably made it clear, I need some Prozac. <laughs> So that's what I'm, uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of town, you know, for Christmas and the holidays. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just put it out there just in case there's somebody out there with a laptop that doesn't need it anymore. I would love to uh, acquire a laptop uh, some way so that I didn't have to stop doing the shows for the entire month. I, I love doing the shows. It really feeds my soul. But we are listener supported. Um, I don't have a paycheck just because I'm on the radio. I don't sell ads. I don't sell ads. I mean, that's. I think that's why the listeners like my show because I'm not selling anything. But you know, again, I have bills to pay as well. Um, so yeah, we appreciate your support, your donations, and your presence, and for sharing your authentic selves. If somebody does just happen to have a an old laptop lying around that you don't need, it would really help me to continue my vision and continue the show when I do need my Prozac and have to get out of town. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I put it out there. And thank you again for joining us here tonight. Abundant blessings and love. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. We will see you uh, next week. Just check, check the website at Soul Journeys Radio. Dot com or uh, click in the forum and that will let you know where the next shows will be. So thank you again, Carrie. Thank, thank you, you, Louie. Thank you, Rutherford. Thank you, Tobias. I love you all and good night. Much love. Good night. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio.